Hello and welcome back to the table, Wonders. Uh, we're here again. Uh, AJ has disappeared back into the ether of mm. time. Where'd he go? I have no idea. Uh, it's so, like it's somewhere called Vancouver. <sighs> what a cursed land, that place. Yeah, and he'll be back in again this weekend for <laughs> KameaCon with us. So <laughs> He's just been like back forth, like... I went up there, I brought him back, and now he has to come back a couple weeks it's, later. It's one of those, if the time had just been a little bit better, it could have just stayed. Yeah. yeah. By, by the way, we apparently have had a package sent to us that said to please open at the table. Ooh la la. Did, so, uh, allow me to show you what the contents are th are of them. This binder. It is a binder filled binder. with artwork. And oh, oh, man. Well. Oh, look at him. So we got a little friendly Chromagill here. I love him. Oh, nice. Whoa! Hey! Is that Wake with a what, mustache? What am I, what am I tied key? to? I, no, I think, uh, oh, it's the letter, the letter will explain. Ah, okay, okay. The letter will explain. The letter explains all. <laughs> Praise be the letter. Morgan. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> His terrible dreams. <laughs> terrible nightmare dreams. I just dreams. want some quiet. And, and apparently they remembered that Sableye is my favorite because apparently they drew that. Nice! nice. That's adorable. Sableye's a fun Pokemon. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Good pick. I really wish he didn't Ice have a start. mega and he had an actual evolution, but that's just this man's opinion. <laughs> All right, so let me get to that letter. Dear Team Four Star, I just wanted to say thank you for the continuous laughter from DBZA, your Nuzlocks, and TFS at the table. I remember watching the first episode on Archive and losing myself in the story and realizing two and a half hours had passed and game... And, uh, and gave me a love for D&D. &D. So I have a few homebrew items, an original story idea, and... Some fan art to show off. Got a, it would G be uh, got a DM in the making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that cosmology shit ready. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get it ready going. Universe. Get it brewing. Make it your own. It will uh, it'd be cool to meet one of you at a convention, so I hope to one day and enjoy fan art, Grant, a Chromagill inspired movie poster sprinkling spores like salt, like salt bay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Old bay salt just. Alrighty, Lanny, with Wake's evasion ring and new Kelpie guard, I have given, I gave Wake his version of the Avatar state. Ah, oh, nice. Oh. You were surrounded by your elements. Yep. Morgan, trying to escape from his demons, but can't. By the way, loving your character so far. Can't wait to see more. And thanks for all what you and Tyler do at the tech desk. Aw, oh, yeah. Show wouldn't be the same without you guys. <laughs> Tyler, Tyler all right, so canonically, can Tyler we all approves. say, like, for D&D-related reasons, Tyler is either a goblin or a mimic because he likes mimics, right? He loves mimics. What, Tyler? Can confirm. I like mimic. He, all right, there you go. Tyler is a mi mimic confirmed. He likes mimics. And Zito, it's you, but as a sable eye, because I remember saying that he was your boy. Hell yeah. Indeed he was. All right. Uh... From Justin or J Dog Cosplay. Well, thank you kindly, J Dog thank Cosplay. You. Good stuff. Love it. Well, uh, excellent. I'll put this in my backpack, real quick, so we can put it to the side later. Mm hmm. Excellent. We got that board up there. We're going to hang up those pictures. Hell yeah. All right. So, as we last left our heroes, they have just slain what looks like a Cyclops, a Cyclopsian demon, and basically performed a mutiny. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, so what you got, so as the body falls, everyone turns to look and see where AJ is as he was crumpled on the floor last everyone saw as he was hugging the eye of the centipede that was infused into the demon. That thing had a cycloptic eye as well. He's Luckily. No longer, he's no longer, uh, seen to everyone else's surprise, though not to Wakes, of course. Apparently he must have miscalculated how long he was sleeping in the box. Chromagill's going to investigate. He doesn't understand this. Where'd he go? Uh-huh. Uh, I got a four. Just, what witchcraft <laughs> is this? He just up and vanished. Wait, Wait, what? Has anyone seen AJ? He seemed so pleasant. I'd hate for him to vanish like this. Uh, it's it's his curse. Like I, like I said, he just kind of teleports around and boop, now he's gone. But he got his eye, so I'm guessing he's probably happy about that wherever he landed, oh. which I'm sure is pleasant. Well, okay. At least... At least I can be comforted knowing that wherever he is, he isn't suffering or in any sort of discomfort. Cut to AJ falling like 15 feet into the mouth of an open volcano. <laughs> After burning most of his spells. <laughs> it's good to know he continues to be hungry. God damn it. Off of the distance, like in the far back, like in a pan shot, a volcano erupts. <laughs> 
I would love to see a moment where he like starts to disappear and just turns up like two feet to his left. <laughs> I guess I could end up anywhere. I mean, he is underwater now. <laughs> oh man, yeah, going through the three dimensions. What if he ends up in space at one point? <laughs> I... There's a whole lot of this planet that isn't, you know, above the ground. And there's yeah. a whole lot of this universe that just isn't planet. <laughs> That's fair, there are 14 realms. <laughs> uh, so, with that, you guys have defeated your boarding party, but that does also leave you open to the idea that uh, you are still being boarded by four other ships on all sides, and you only fought a small contingency, including their boss. There are other tieflings and goblins and orcs on these ships just watching you now. All right, like, it's somebody else's turn. Like, I'm not feeling so hot. <laughs> Grubagil just... We're your boss now, basically, right? Tr transitive properties. Roll persuasion with disadvantage. Of course, the good dice gets an at 20. Let's see what the other dice gets. A Two! Hey! And I have a negative one, so a unnatural one! You are watching as most of the other crew is starting to board onto the planks getting onto your ship. You are all in the center of the front of the ship at this oh, point. Oh, come on! <laughs> uh, oh, man. I don't have a... I need everyone to roll me a survival check real quick. 17. Uh, that is a... 16. 12. The other two girls rolled a four, and they're kind of like clutching their chest, breathing, gasping for air after that fight, especially Valtara. Yeah. I have six health, so I'm not doing so great. Either. Yeah, I don't that... think any of us are, really. <laughs> no, unfortunately not, but the waves are getting far more turbulent to the fact that they're visibly actually pushing over the other ships in some chances. Oh, by the way, there's a giant monster down there. I, th I feel like I should bring that up. As you say that, something breaks the surface of the water and, sl and smashes into the north. That. Uh, that one. But it did not look the same silhouette as the creature you saw underneath. Okay, not that. Maybe the other one was bigger. Not sure, but... Uh, okay, there's lots of monsters down there. Morgan, you look to the east and see something also breaks the surface behind the ship that's boarding you. Oh, shit. What was that the one? You tell me. You didn't see it. Damn it. So there's a big creature coming out of the water? Is that? Is Chromagill, that you see one come from the west. Just, just, a, just a big creature? Just a giant creature that breaches out of the water, and it's so dark and it's silhouetted that you could barely see what it was. Right. Uh, Unless you want to roll something for it. I was going to say, I don't have to roll something. It's going to roll against me. I'm going to cast some animal friendship. I think this thing's a beast, and I'm going to see if I can talk to it. Okay. Uh, what's, the, what's the range on that? Uh. Oh, wait, yeah, it's a 30-foot range. So yeah, I was about to say, he's, like, he's pretty that, far that's away. pretty far away. Never mind. I guess I'm waiting until he gets close. Well, I mean, you can still roll a perception check to see what it, yeah, you, I, what you can glance at. It's okay, Fungal D. Luffy. We believe in you. I'll, I'll take a look-see at him. Ooh, a net 20. Nice. Uh, you've heard the stories from the roosts, and you've heard the stories from the valleys and all the grass and all the plants that live on this planet. I'm that... being communicated with all life. Anyway... <laughs> Uh, but this is a form, even from out in the middle of the ocean, this is something that even your kind know of. This was a dragon. Is that... This beast! Could this be a dragon, friends? Is this the legends I've heard about? Uh, maybe? It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, uh, my communication with the universe at large seems to indicate that that might be what this is. Everyone roll a... Athletics or acrobatics of your choosing as one of the ship's rocks. Oh boy. Acrobatics it is. Acrobat <laughs> uh five. Oh, oh okay. Just Karma tilted on its side. Session. Nineteen. Uh twelve. Uh Valtara, Micha, and the actual thing itself. Morgan falls to the floor as <laughs> the north side of the ship rocks with the waves and lurches the ship to kind of like push the wood off and you watch as the ship to the north capsizes over as what looks like a giant blue neck lurches over the ship itself and drags it under. Oh. 
There are one of two things that are going to happen next. A second one appears just as that happens to the eastern ship. Uh, oh, that was one of the things. <laughs> Chromagill is just looking around confused. Is this, is this how ship travel normally works? Sometimes. No. <laughs> oh, I mean, not for him, but. I'm gonna roll for Valtara. No, I recognize those skills. Those were sea dragons. More than one. Perfect. Open that one of them isn't one that I know. Anyway, uh, hold what? on. Just don't worry about it. I know a lot of dragons. A lightning bolt strikes the south ship. There's a possibility that I know one of these. Oh, God, someone help me off. And now it's storming? <laughs> Just confused. <laughs> <laughs> all that's left is the eastern ship as all of the goblins and orcs look to their ships getting destroyed. You is guys should probably leave. So I, I, I'm making that call as your new captain. You said they were boarding with like planks and stuff, right? Yep. Yeah, those. I'm assuming anybody on the planks. Yeah, they're gone. gone. They're no, fucking they're gone. <laughs> they're in the water. I was gonna say, if, if there's anyone on those planks, Chromagill's just going over there and pushing that plank. I'm, I'm pretty sure the planks are gone. <laughs> I think the <laughs> waves are so sure. turbulent that yeah, they're getting knocked over. All that's left is one other ship, apart from yours. If I was you, I'd get away from here. Two silhouetted dragon heads peer out of the water next to the eastern ship. What's going on? You can get up. I know, I'm just big as shit. <laughs> oh. What the hells? Hey, Morgan, it seems we're surrounded by dragons. That, my boy, is a dragon. And another one. Probably another one, I, I don't know. Only two heads have perched up out of the water. At the same time. Gotcha. Yes. They, they open their mouths collectively and look down at the other ship with lightning crackling in both their mouths. I don't like this situation very much, Wake. I feel I'm beginning to think I should have stayed on land. This seems like perhaps I won't be able to bring balance with creatures like this stalking us in the water. Well, some dragons are reasonable. Don't, don't worry. Maybe they're just... The other ship... The entire crew just abandons the ship. Yeah, that's a smart move. Probably. Should we disperse? Uh, you hear? How a... close are we to land? Mm, I might be okay. <laughs> you hear a male voice come out from one of the dragons. Flee, cowards! Flee! Must you? A female voice says to the other one. Shit, 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 shit. We need at least some of them alive, Pops Ravi. Oh, that's a good and bad news. They in need one some time. alive. Perfect. Hello. No, We'd no, love to no, volunteer. No. Oh, thank God they can't hear him. They can't hear him. Hey, hey! Roll <laughs> persuasion. <laughs> he can't, they can't hear me. They, they don't have sports. They, they don't have sports. Oh, so they can't hear man. me. I'm just waving my arms at them. Well, roll perception. You're trying to get their attention. I guess yeah, it would be. Yeah. Uh, modified twenty. Well, thank God dragons have really high stats, <laughs> right? Right? Mm -hmm. Jumping up and down. Hey! Don't, 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 don't. One of the heads the, leers But they over. need one alive, right? Yeah, but this... The Valtar is shocked as she watches as the entire face of one of them is completely paled over white. Okay, partly good news. That one's nice. Chromagill waves, and then, since he knows he is not being understood at the moment, and worries that a sneeze might just cause more problems her, than it would solve. Her head... Lurches over yours like she missed. She's looking left and right. Wake uh, throws his hood over his face. <laughs> just wearing my Johnny Dark Souls get up here. Just Wake, your, I don't, your ship, I, I don't your, know if this one understands my arm waving, but I'm afraid to sneeze. Perhaps could you could you say oh, we'd uh, love to volunteer to be the ones alive? Uh, whoa, is that you? You know of my name. She like looks around trying to find your face. Uh, yeah, we were, uh, well, I, I was there when you were discovered in the, uh, I guess, archipelago. The, remember, you were trapped by the giant stone face. She, like, lurches down. She, like, kind of, like, lays her head down. I, I, uh, step forward and just kind of, like, reach out so she, like, she can, like, her, smell she, me. Yeah, she, like, flicks her tongue at you. I know who you are. 
I'm really glad. I think your friend might too. So if we could just avoid names, that'd be perfect. You hear in the back. Are they victims or are they demons? Whoa. We need to make this quick. Uh, the, this, this crew is uh, victims. They were the ones being hunted. She like turns to converse with the other head. Pops Ravi, these are victims. Try to at least lure a few others from out of the ocean and bring them back onto the ship. Lieutenant Gore will want to speak with them. Oh boy, I do know that one. That one is, uh, that one I know him. I know him, he's, he's, he's cool. You know what that is too, Morgan. Oh, good. I have not heard that name in so long. It's been a couple of months for me. Try two years. I, uh, I, I didn't even meet him before uh, then, so. You, oh. you watch as Woe kind of like say, like, you may be still, take rest, we will be right back with you. She, Sounds good. She retreats, her head lurches back and goes into the water. You watch as like the both dragons are now like tossing some loose crewmen onto the ship of the other ship. So uh, I think we should probably just go inform everybody downstairs what's yeah. going on. Uh, Let's uh, get them unshackled. <laughs> Valtara doesn't move. She's actually watching. She's looking off in the direction where Woe's head dive, uh, dove into. Uh, you look like you got this covered. We're going to go make sure that everybody down there is safe and uh, pro probably best just to leave the crew yeah, 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 and, yeah. yeah. They seem like fascinating creatures, Valtara. Are you interested too? I know that one. Uh, which one? The one who spoke to you, the one who named herself Woe. Oh, yeah. She's, uh, she's nice. I cared for her. I was the one who cured most of her disease. Oh. Small world. It's like a dragon reunion here. If it's cool. all the same to you, I will stay up top and she like looks she like looks like she's about to fall over and meet you. Just like goes, I would help you, but you are quite big. She like steps <laughs> back, like, no. Yeah, maybe you should uh just take stands a... by her to try and like lead like aid Athletics. some support. Take take a seat. Uh, 18. You, like, kind of, like, catch her. She's about to fall, and she takes a knee. Here, I can I can stay with you. I feel like most of the crew downstairs is still uncomfortable about my spores, so perhaps you would be the better people to tell them what's going on. I think some of them still think I'm some kind of monster. Yeah, best if the uh, second dragon doesn't really get a whiff of me. I may have conned him out of a lot of things. Oh, you hear okay. a voice in the You hear a voice in the distance. What is on that ship? I'm going to go downstairs real quick. <laughs> you guys head down. The other folks. Grumma will stay up top, just yeah. patting Voltara. You watch. Uh, you see. Uh, uh, Cleva has been guarding the door. She looks relieved as she stands up, looking to a lot of you. What's going on out there? It sounds like there's nothing but explosions going off. All right. Step one. Uh, the demons are dead. Uh, everybody here is safe. Uh, step two. There are three dragons on their way here. She holds her axe at the ready. It's good I, luck. I, yeah, I think we're beyond that one. Uh, what do they want with us? Unsure yet, though they did make mentions of demons or victims. So I'm guessing that at the very least, they are friendlier than they are hostile. Well, if Gore is involved, I think we're about to be in naval custody. Very possible. Uh, she kind of just like lowers her guard. Well, if it's the Navy's going to be helping us, then surely this is a blessing in disguise. Perhaps. I mean, we are on our way to uh, Zealous, after all. It'd probably be easier to get there via the Navy. Well, what should we do with everyone else then? Would it be wise for them to stay locked up, or should we let them out? It's probably best to keep them shackled for now, just so we can... Uh, Clear the air on their involvement in all of this. All right, but I, I just know that my axe is beyond a boarding dragon. I'm pretty sure that anybody that tries to stop the dragons from getting on board is going to have more than enough issues. So I think we'll just uh, deal with this as it comes. Otherwise, you, you hear uh, a voice from behind one of the uh, first floor, like hidden compartment. There's a what out there? Is like you hear fucking Marlo scream out. He's hearing the conversation. A uh, dragon. Three, to be specific. You hear everyone inside there screaming. A real charmer. Well, I mean, I, I figure they're going to learn sooner or later. May as well let them out now. Yeah, that's fair. 
They're gonna have to get this out of their system. Better not when all of the dragons are there. So there's pandemonium on the other side. Yeah. You can hear yeah. it. All right, well, uh... Cleva just looks to you, just like, really? Look, I... I'm not exactly the morale guy. <laughs> Put that out there. Just float that. Is there just like a door between this room and the room that everyone's in? No, it's the giant sliding wall that opens up. Okay. So like the one where you guys slept in and the bottom deck. Okay. So I'm just gonna push the wall slightly ajar and just scream out, if they wanted us dead, they would have done it already. Yeah. Wait, persuasion. Thank God for charisma. Hmm. That's a seven. Okay. Here, I thought that looked like a net one. And I was like, no, where's your no. god now? <laughs> Landed on a they, four. There are get... people still panicking and like yelling, but not as much as before. There is still panic in them. Hmm. I take okay. it not. I take it not everybody's met a dragon before. Hmm. I got it. Cleva just looks at you like these are common folk. Of course they haven't. Hold on, I got it. I got it. D don't worry, the navy's coming. Lieutenant Gore is coming. You hear Kardak. Gore! I am not happy either, Kardak. Well, I'm glad to see him than a demon. All of a sudden, like, it starts to get a little hush and a little bit more quiet back there. Kardak starts regaling who Lieutenant Gore is and the fact that he's a dragon makes total sense. Yeah. There. Problem solved. All right. Yeah, that works out much better. Probably could have probably led with that one. You just watch as, like... A purple hand kind of like lurches out. She's trying, as trying, like two female hands kind of like grab the door, trying to push out. I want to see a dragon. As Bliss like looks out. Yeah, sure, come on out. She like wiggles, it, wiggles herself out, and she like runs upstairs. Oh hi, Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make so much money off these songs. And she like runs upstairs. Yeah, seems legit. Yeah, very legit. How are you holding up? Uh, on a scale of 1 to 47, I'm at about a 7. <laughs> what a specific scale. I have many. Uh, add 7 to that. Healing, yeah! Healing word. Okay. Well, at this point, you guys are welcome to take a rest because the one, one dragon is now, like, Chromagill, you're seeing this. One dragon is now lurching over the other ship, oh. and another dragon actually polymorphed itself into a humanoid form and is interrogating the other the people that they captured. All right, well, while they're doing that, I'm going to uh, attempt to scrounge up whatever these demons and specifically the Cyclops might have had on them at the very least. Okay, uh, I need you to roll me a survival check. Bloop. Survival of the fittest. Do -do -do, that's, uh, 15. 15? 15? Uh, what's left on the body of the demon itself is a large oversized jacket, which could technically just be a tarp that was befitted around him. Big boy coat. Yep, big boy coat. Something that only a large creature can wear. It's like a cape. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, it's a cape with sleeves. <laughs> Snuggy. I give it to Voltar, or I... Uh, like, is it, there anything specific about the material? Like, does it look like it has any function to it? It's patchwork together with other uh, pirate ship flags. Huh, looks cool. I offer it to uh, Chromagill. Ooh. It's a large creature, so it's still even big for me, right? Like, it's Yeah, huge. you are considered medium, but you can have the carrying capacity of a large creature. Okay. So, so it fits, you, it's just a little untamed. Yeah, you, would you would have to get this thing allocated to yourself it's if you wanted it to loose, fit. He's like, he's, like he, a kid. He's just got, like, a long cape. Yep. Kind of just tries to drape it over his cap and see if it just looks like a big like headdress going down. So he's just a roll me a <laughs> chroma kage. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God damn it. All right. What uh, do I need to roll for fashion? <laughs> uh. Well, what would you want to roll to see how that would work? Uh, I'd like to see what your idea of this would be. Oh man. Well, you know what? I'm I'm gonna be real with you. I don't think chroma gill would be very good at it. So I'm gonna go with a skill that I don't think is gonna work. Uh, since it works with dex, I'm gonna go with acrobatics, I guess. But he's just. Trying to dexterously it. like put it on his head because he doesn't want to rip it with his power. All right, go for it. So he's just gonna kind of drape it, and I get a ten on that. It's a little heavy. Uh, 
it it kind of presses down on top of you and you have to push more of it away from yourself so you're able to like maybe get it like up to the tip of your cap before it starts getting too heavy it's a bit hefty for me to wear on my head but i uh, think i'll find a use for it perhaps oh well, we can trim it down and make it work for you yeah a little uh, souvenir from your time here on top of that there is the fact that this cyclopsian dude is like covered in like patches of of hair that actually feel coarse and rough like almost like blades to the touch this is like parts of like where his elbow is where his arm is like his arm hair is that material all right so he's just got like really tough hair did it, he... it's like dark blondish hair like going down the side of his arms and his legs uh, and did i collect any of that or... i'm saying this is what you find then i'm still going through the survival check okay uh, so there's patches of very coarse hair that feel like, if fitted correctly, could make some kind of very strong blade or something that can ground material. Okay. Uh, there are his teeth. Uh, you could attempt to try and rip some of those out. Whichever ones aren't dissolved by his blood puke. Yeah, there is a puddle of that blood puke as well. I am out of vials, unfortunately. And oh, wait, no, I have one from the, uh, uh, bristle bean juice. And there is one giant great axe that only someone who has a carrying capacity of large can wield. That's not me. Uh, Romagil can wield it. I was going to say, that sounds like something I'm going to pick up. I, I'm, I'm going to attempt to scoop up some of that uh, blood puke acid. With what? Uh, I have a vi I have a empty vial that used to hold some bristle bean. Alright, I need coffee. you to roll me a survival check. 18. 18. You're able to at least scoop up one vial, but just by getting your hand inside of the goop a little bit, you can feel it singeing. Ow, Doing ow, that again ow, will not ow. be a wise idea. One vial of acidic blood. And also, on top of all this, apart from all the pieces that you're seeing on this guy, uh, you do find a pouch full of coins, but they are not gold. Interesting. So just, uh... Someone will have to open the bag, but you can feel it. It feels like gold. Chink, chink, chink. Hey, Morgan, can you check this out? Tink. Okay. Gas style platinum, 15 coins. <coughs> huh. I haven't seen this platinum currency in forever. It's gas style platinum. 15 of them. Oh, well, that'll probably be, uh... So Probably worth something to somebody. That's, well, I'm guess, I'm platinum. they're worth platinum. Yes, yeah, they are gotcha. worth platinum, so that's 15,000 gold. Yeah, I didn't know if, like, the southern, like, states would take... Accept their Yeah, currency. accept coin that is not stamped if, by the government. If minted, if minted down, it could be re rebade into... Reforged. Yeah, it could be reforged. But it's worth the platinum it's made out of. It's yes, very pretty much. Uh, as for all the tieflings that were on there, you have your standard jackets, uh, some... So you have, like pirate or clothing for sailors. Uh, miscellaneously, while rummaging through all of them, you could also find... Ooh, nice. That's actually fucking outstanding. Okay, cool. Uh, 400 gold uh, from collecting out of all of them. Uh, there's a couple of pistols on there. They look really makeshift and just hobble together. Not really worth all the trouble, but you could give them away or do something else with them. So you'll find, let's see here. Need to you only them. find two serviceable pistols. Mm. Uh, you find seven serviceable uh, short swords. Uh, and I'm trying to see if there's anything else that these boys would be carrying that would be of interest to you. Okay, well, with that roll, one of them has one thing. A wondrous item. Ooh, ooh interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I need whoever's going to be searching these bodies to roll a survival check. Uh, I have a crap ton of mystical <laughs> stuff, so... Uh, or actually, what's your wisdom? Uh, plus one. All right, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, I'm more of an acolyte than an outlander. I am a monk, therefore, uh, 21. 21? Okay. Uh, you find a, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna go with that one instead. That'd be pretty cool. You find a very 
well-polished and well-designed ring on one of these guys' hands, and it feels arcane in some way. It has uh, elvish wording etched across it. I speak elven. Do I know what it says? Yes, you do. You, uh... Da, 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 da. Let me double-check this. I'm just double-checking my stats so I don't fuck this up. No worries. Uh... In given, in given haste is one given reach. It's another haste for another fast action. There is ring. no way Zito would give <laughs> anything that gives me haste haste. Uh, not after I saw how broken it was last time. In given haste, uh, so given reach. Yeah. Hmm. I look down at my finger. I'm already wearing a ring. I you are only allowed three magical items per ton- per character. Yep, I mm. flick it over to Morgan. Ting. Hmm. You earned it. Well, thank you. Does I have no know? idea what it fucking does. Let me see if anyone has <laughs> Identify. I believe Valtara has Identify. Valtara. I, think, I think we've been over this before. I don't think they do. No, Valtara does not have Identify, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I, I had to we're, wait until yeah, we ran into Taka. To, we're a uh, squad of wanderers who has no idea how to see what things do. I mean, I could do maybe an arcana check on it. I mean, sure, you could do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, using the fact that I knew what they were, can I give him advantage by telling him what the uh, script says? Uh, you could, Yeah, you give him the script, so you're going to have the benefit of help on this one. Okay, so roll right. with that advantage. Yay! Yeah, I'll take the other one. Uh, 21. 21? Uh, based on this wording, you don't understand what the haste part about it is, but apparently quick action allows one's... Uh, and allows an object of one who's holding it, it gains reach. Hmm. Hmm, that's pretty nice. So any melee weapon, so long as you activate this ring, will give you a plus five reach on it. Uh, is that a bonus action or a... That is a bonus action. Okay. And it's a once per day. Mm. Slip. Yep. Hmm. You, f- you feel like if you were able to, like, you can look at your blade and you actually see there's a little bit of an after image when you're holding it in your hand. Almost like the blade is flexing and wiggling with it. If you were to slice, that after image would actually create a sort of reach on top of the blade. Hmm. This is going to be fun. Uh, Chromagill heads over to the the corpse of the big boy with the with the axe that was too heavy for everyone else and just <laughs> tries to pick it up. Is a uh, roll import- athletics. I was I was gonna say important question though. Is it does, is it metallic? Is it a, is it a metal axe? Because that will be a problem for good old Chromagill. Uh, it is. It has metallic on it, but it has a wooden hilt. Okay. Uh, acrobatics. You said. Yeah. So Fifteen or, Fif- or athletics. Sorry. Athletics. Yeah. You're able to hold it up with no problem, but yeah, the fact that it is made of metal is kind of a little unpersuasive to you. Mm. Well, I don't like... Kind of points at the metallic parts. Weapons such as this have never made me comfortable to wield. I just... I don't much like them, but... Kind of swings it around. How does it How does it feel if, uh, if there's anything... I need you to roll me another athletics check sure. as you're wielding it around. Hopefully you don't have to do that every time you... Yeah. Uh, 17. 17? That kind of is the thing about this weapon. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just unwieldy. It, it, it takes a lot of heft to do. However, I will grant you this. Swinging this weapon around, it do you, feel, you can feel that this thing will do some great damage, enough that it gives you a 2d12 damage roll. Woo! But I have to like check my strength. But you have I, to make you have to break. It, so a, it's a gamble. So you have you have to break a DC 15 in athletics each time you swing it. <laughs> I'm All right. really glad I dodged that. <laughs> huh? Okay. Mm. I'm gonna keep this thing. <laughs> this this seems difficult, but I think I think I might be able to manage it at least some situations. I'll need to test it more to be sure. Worst case scenario, we can lay it on top of somebody and it just holds them down. So True, pro- it also pro- seems heavy, and just doing a little bit of this drops item <laughs> might do something. Oh, God. Hold on. Oh, no. 
it sinks in through the floor and hooks it. The the metal oh. the metal hatchet part hooks itself on the top deck. Oh my! Okay, I'll need to do that in sturdier floors. Mm. At least it's not the end. <laughs> Wake had to fight the uh, temptation to say sorry, Eldon. <laughs> Pick, picks up the axe and just kind of straps it to himself, trying to just get it hooked on so it's... It is physically bigger than yourself. You have to hold... It has to be across so it's like the a side of you. <laughs> yeah, so we'll need to get, like, a strap in order for, like, the axe to be, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, this this will have to work for now. Just don't give me any thin doorways. Uh, I will say this. Your back can never be too big. I want you walking through the door sideways. <laughs> If you, at this point, if you start adding anything else that is big or heavy on your person, you will start getting encumbrance. Okay. Uh, uh, does this axe have a name or anything that I it should call it? It does not have a name, and y it can only be granted a name if you are to wield it, because if you look on it, it does have some etchings on it, but it's in Infernal, and you have no fucking idea what it says. Uh, you said it's D12. Do I? Uh, it's two D. It does two D12, but you, in order to use it, you must roll a athletics check to do it. If your athletics check beats a DC 15, uh, you can attack. You can roll to attack with it. If it fails, you lose that action. Hmm. The gambles. Yep. I got a plus six on my acrobatics. Or, you mean athletics? Athletics. So I keep getting this swap today. I got plus six on that. So that's you know that's. Almost half of what I need. But with a, with a cre high. with a object like that with its size, you do have a reach of ten. Okay. Okay. Well, right now I just have it written down as big ass axe. <laughs> you so, can compare notes with Cleva. Yeah. Yep. So with all that information, everyone's kind of just like taking their break out of this. So I will say, congratulations, gentlemen. You are now level, I believe, seven. Yeah. Yep. Hooray! So if you want to go ahead and add those mats in, that's fine. But... I get evasion now. <laughs> I now am fucking here to destroy objects. I now gain advantage on breaking things with my strength checks and uh, deal double damage to any, like, uh, to objects and... What else did it say? Objects and constructs, I think? I hit, like, a fucking truck to things that aren't alive. Uh, objects and structures, sorry. So you're a siege weapon. Yes. You're a fucking walking ballista. I'm here to tear down buildings, motherfucker. <laughs> Ooh, and stillness of mind. Oh, I've been waiting on that one. Anything you got that's fun? Are these Skyrim level ups? Do I get my health back? Uh, I'm going to say you don't have to worry about health at this point. Okay. Like, I'm going to say, for the sake of you guys taking care of this, and with Woe and with Pabs Ravi kind of, like, taking care of everything else with the other remaining ships, you can take a full rest. Awesome. And uh, we're taking the average of the hit dice, right? Yes, you're taking average plus con. Okay. Average plus con. I just get 6 HP, and next level I can do 5th level spells. Ooh. I gained 9 HP, and I also now resist necrotic damage. Nice. Very nice. Undead shit, don't scare me no more. I ain't afraid of no ghost. I'm here to bring balance, and you guys ain't it. Chief. I'm feeling attacked now. <laughs> don't worry, Morgan. I like you. You can stay. Uh, so with all of this uh, going on, you all decide it's time to get some rest, uh, take a breather in. Uh, Bliss has been, like, looking at the dragons off in the distance, and she's just writing down stuff. So is Valtara, though she seems a little bit more at ease with this, more than she is. And she keeps staring off at the female dragon more than she does the male dragon. You know where her priorities lie. Yeah, her priorities lie on that. She kind of, like, looks like she's has this gentle peace about her that only a parent could have with a child. No. Uh, Bliss, on the other hand, now just, like, looks left and right. Wait a minute. She like looks down the side and she looks over to uh, you guys. Wait, where'd the rich folks stay? That's a good question. I don't think we ever actually found out where they were staying. You guys never checked the back crew quarters, which was on the other side of the ship on the deck. That was where the rich people stayed. Wake is gonna sneak up that way and check Not it. before Bliss does first, she runs. Wake's gonna run too and I'm faster. You see Misha just run, like, fucking jolt after you guys. Don't touch my shit! I'm staying out of your room! It's like a family. 
She's like, you motherfucker. She's like, just Mija just turns 180 degrees like an owl. Feline, feline grace. <laughs> no! Chromagill has very little interest in, in material things other than this sick ass axe, which he's just showing to Cleva now and just going, Look how big it is! I love big things! <laughs> <laughs> she like looks over to you. Oh, that's right. You're the sovereign of your group. Size is a very higher priority for you. Indeed! And look at this! This must be the sovereign of axes! Like, just <laughs> lifting it, just it's, like a bar. Like she, like, she like picks it up and looks at it. Funny enough, the infernal on here does say sovereign. <gasps> it was meant to be. <laughs> You feel uneasy looking at the metal bits, though. It's... But at the same time, this guilt, this dangerous metal here, kind of, like, shakes it. Is it loose at all? No, it is not. It's... But again, this is, like, welded together with other extra bits, so this <clears throat> looks like a cobbled-together weapon that was just made for this dude. Perhaps someday I'll be able to find... I don't know. Is it... Is it forge? Some... Whatever you people do to manipulate metal, maybe I can make this smoother and easy to wield well, without sacrificing too much of its strength. But I don't know. I just wanted to show it to you. You seem to be someone who really liked axes, and I figured you might appreciate this craftsmanship. She picks it up. See? It's big! <laughs> <laughs> like, you just watch as this giant triceratops woman holds the axe, but falls over to the side. It's large, like you are. Here, let me help. <laughs> Just kind of fix it up. She was not expecting that. Uh, so, Wake, you decide to go in the back. Uh, you're now in what looks like the crew quarters and the uh, the higher suite quarters. They don't look fantastic. They're probably, like, maybe have a little bit more better furnishings than you guys did, like an actual bed or, like, a hammock, uh, a small pantry that people can place their belongings and food into. My room on the Yeldon was way better than this. Huh. <laughs> you paid for this. I paid to be on a smuggler's ship, Wake. Yeah, so did I. She, like, slaps you over the back of the head and takes his, and takes the the rest of her money. <laughs> uh, She does look through the crew. You do look through the crew quarters, because at this point, like, Meech is now just eyeing you, just like, I swear to God, you touch my shit, there's going to be problems. I'm taking your stuff. Your stuff's yours. We're keeping I'm, it that way. I am not a thief. Now let's see what these guys had. <laughs> but you just watch Blicious like lean over the side. But I am. That is none of my business. Do you? Man, are you seeing all these blueprints from this Slork guy? <laughs> no. You're looking at him. She like shows them up to you. You see four various different blueprints. I have no idea what these are. Actually, they, hold on. Intelligence check. Yeah, I was about to say. I have no idea what these are. Five. <laughs> I don't I know what Mr. Fun. Slorg's all about, but apparently he's uh, very egotistical when it comes to his naming conventions. She like flips through one of the pages. The brine shot, the anchor flail, the slorg shot. She like chuckles at that one. She like whips her tail like laughing at that one. And something called the umbrella cannon. These all look like siege weapons you put on ships. Wow. Sounds cool. I really don't know how to, uh, I don't really have a ship except this one, unless we're not allowed to. Why would I, you... look, I look at all the rickety parts. Eh, it's not the worst. Well, considering... I put a hole in the floor. <laughs> Chromagill's foot comes out from on top. <laughs> Sorry! Oops. That's how he christens the ship. Yeah, crunch. <laughs> I know every footstep I take deals double damage to floors now. So I need oh, you to uh, roll me a survival check to find anything else on here that would be of use to you. Uh, 13 plus 6, 19. You find everyone's pay who uh, decide, who went on this ship. So that's 2, 000, uh, that's 1,000, uh, not including Meech's. And then everyone else is 25. All right, so we refunded Meech's. Yep. Meecha was not letting you get away without refunding it. Uh, on top of that, you notice that the guys, all, the, the people who were on this deck also had a lot of uh, 
books and clothing that had a lot of yip symbols on top of them. Though now they all seem to like look like they have faded away, almost through some kind of weird acidic means. I wonder if I should give these back to the uh, other guy. I mean, they seem to be doing their... I like kind of like take my staff and just kind of squanch at one that's like... Do they, do they look like squishy? Uh, they don't. No, they're not squishy. They just look like uh, they're raincoats with the symbols on them. But the symbols look like they're acidically kind of melting away. Ah, uh, okay. There's books and there's uh, uh, outfits. <laughs> I'm gonna open up one of the books, see if like all the text is melting out and stuff. The texts look like sea charts. Oh. Uh, one that looks like it's a manifest for a trade route that's supposed to go up to the uh, canal. Gore might find this interesting. Uh, there is another chart that talks about a way to circumvent all of Avast to get to uh, Eel's Gape. And there's also one that speaks about a possible hidden cavern underneath a mountain that reaches the Underdark that lets you get inside of Avast in the inner shores of the archipelago. I'm going to keep those two to myself. Okay. Avast shortcut, Eelsgape shortcut. Uh, aside from that, uh, the crew didn't really have any money on them. They do have like some fine pieces of like artwork, like goblets and shit, uh, goblets, uh, silverware. Uh, all this stuff all combined together would probably net you maybe two hundred bucks at most if you find someone to fleece all of it. And there is at least two. I'm going to say two weeks' worth of decent rations on this side of the ship. If I had a scrung, then I'd be able to find somebody to sell these things, but that's not really on me. The hell's a scrung, Bliss says as she's rummaging through. Oh, he's like a goblin prince. He's awesome. Oh, you knew a goblin prince? Yeah. Where's his horde, then? Uh, Obviously, if he's rich and he's loaded. Well, he's also... You know, you might actually make a fun song about him. I, uh, I regale, She's already I, furiously writing. Yeah, I regale her the uh, tale of Scrung. Scrung will love having a song about him, Wake says to himself. <laughs> what a silly name, though. I'm gonna have to make a little gag about that. Maybe something for the kids to make fun of. Imagine if they had a small little uh, pinata which was made out of this man. Uh, it's, you know, yeah, that'd be funny. He'd, he'd like that. He was a clown, too, once. On the crew that I was in. Excellent, excellent. This is very good. Here, a stipend for your trouble. She gives you 25 gold for the story. Hey! Cool. And somewhere out there on Heldrum, you hear a soft dis You see the kingdom of goblins. You see you, you green watch the, the ivory tower of goblins off of the distance, all around, like, all the neon lights and everything in this modern city. <laughs> oh, good. He made it home. <laughs> Cut back to... Cut back to Lasaranis. Um, she will. Uh, she's. She looks like she's been like stealing all the stuff you didn't pick up at this point. Anything that's not nailed down, she's taking. She's just fucking going ham on stealing stuff here. Hey, live your best life. You don't think the dragons are going to be upset or kind of take heed to all this, will you? I mean, as long as they don't know, it's not going to hurt you. She snaps her fingers at you. Now I just need to persuade dragons not to eat us and not to take my gold. That's going to be even more difficult. That's okay. I know uh, two of them are cool with me. Uh, the other one is questionable. Why questionable? I may have stolen all of his stuff. This sounds like a story. Yes. This sounds like a song. Ooh. I regale her the tale of Pobs Ravi and the immortal uh, trogs beneath the sea. Immortal what? She's just like, she's going ham now. She just gives you another 25 gold. Ha ha! It's also where a sect, a sect of the last surviving unicorns lived. And oh man, they're so much. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> galaxy brain. Yeah, Blish like galaxy brains this entire story. <laughs> There was a dude who turned into a staff? I don't care if all of this that you're telling me is a lie, but this is just going to be so amazing. My concert is going to be great. I will be making opera history. Awesome. I can't wait to get to Los... I can't wait to get to South Zealous. Wait, how are we going to do that? 
Uh, well, I'm assuming the Navy can help with that. I mean, they got a way in, right? She, like, clutches her bag to her chest. Yes. She slinks away into the darkness. Yeah, like, you see her eyes slit like a cat. <laughs> what a nice lady. You hear, like, a, a humbling, gr a grumbling hiss under her throat as she kind of, like, slinks away. Wake rejoins everybody back on the deck now that he has collected pretty much everything of value in here. They the the two dragons are now kind of, like, setting their sights on the ship. Hood back up. You watch as, like, the two heads kind of, like, lurch over and look at everyone. Oh, hello. Pl pleasure to make your acquaintance. <clears throat> What the hell's wrong with them, Morgan? Someone tell them I'm going to sneeze, and I mean them no harm. Uh, this mushroom is gonna make little sneezy. It means you know I'm. <laughs> the fog does not reach them. If, if you want to dip your head down in there, you'll be able to hear him, maybe. We will do something more, then. You watch as they begin to shrink, and two hands reach up on the side of the deck as two very elegant humanoids garbed in blue robes jo uh, join up on the deck. Where'd uh, the dragons hood, go? Hood goes lower. <laughs> Those are the dragons, Chromagill. Chromagill, roll nature check. Ooh, uh, 21. Dragons can polymorph into other people. Oh, okay, yes, I, I have heard legends of that. All right, I was just, sorry. Eyes are really all I have here. Visual stimuli is what I base you what you are on. Uh, he says what's that lieutenant's coming this ways, yeah? Why are you speaking like that, Wake? <laughs> I'm just... Uh, who's this Wake you're talking about? He must be a fine bloke. Scratch, Pops scratch, scratch. You, scratch. you watch as, like, the fucking bodybuilder-sized humanoid male kind of, like, lurches himself over towards you and looks down at you. <laughs> Wake, I don't think your accent's working. Somebody smell raptors. No <laughs> oh, fuck! Grabs you by the throat and lifts you up. This brings back so many memories. It's a very man. charming smell. I bet the ladies love you. Oh, my heart. Wake, I, I feel like you're making things worse. I might be. Just stop talking, Wake. I can't. It's the only thing I got left. Just stop it, man. What if I told you he Whoa, was really kind of sorry? Whoa, kind like your way over. Pushes Pabs Ravi off you, lets you go. Pabs is pushed 40 feet away. <sighs> so off the ship? Not off the ship, like <laughs> okay. across the deck. Surprise! Okay. It was me all along. Oh, look at that! Nobody knew! His mouth is crackling with energy. I should kill you where you stand. I know what you've done! Probably, but I don't think your boss would appreciate that. He's... The moment you say that, he kind of like clenches his fist together and he punches the the, the deck of the ship and makes a massive hole. Uh, oh. Hey, I did that once. <laughs> if it were not that the old man requires your testimony, I, I would have eaten you, dragged you into the sea and eaten you. Oh, look, hold on. I, just just to make things me. all all squaresies, I'm gonna walk away from everybody. Like, so it's just me in a straight line with him. Just go ahead and zap me with whatever you want. Just throw it right at me. Oh, One free shot. No, he fucking, like, just, he gets up right in front of you and picks you up by the shirt again, not showing, whoa, that he's not grabbing you by the throat. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Our revenge will be one of poetic justice. So I there's... will find ways to make you suffer, but not by physical means he lets go of you and you will never see it coming he seems like a good negotiator <laughs> yeah no that you you kind of heard the ham in his voice when he said that he was trying to be all tough again teenager dragon yeah well i'm just saying hey if you want to want to take that zap just real quick right here no 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 getting a free hit would not be satisfying Oh, Gore, Gore's fine with it. I mean, he asked me once. I, I just think it's fair, you know? I, I played you. You can... What did you do? Roll a persuasion check. Uh, persuasion... That's not bad, even with my terrible charisma. That's a 15. 
He like pats you on the head. Your entire body begins to jolt with electricity. See, I wanted to show off the fact that I got evasion. (laughs) Are you taking your lumps on this one? I mean, I was hoping he'd zap me with his breath so I could show off. Ha ha, you fucked up, sucker. But nah, it's fine. I'll, I'll just, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, what is your AC? Uh, my AC is 17. 17? Okay. Yeah, that's hitting. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to say this kills you because, again, you got full HP <laughs> or anything. Yeah. I, I, well, it would have to do a lot, a lot of damage to kill me. No, I know. I know. <laughs> I like just a roll. So this isn't going to kill you, but... 14. This is going to hurt. <laughs> Just by him patting you on the head, that first pat was 14 electric damage, and that second pat was 23. Wake's hair is all standing up, and he's dehydrated. <laughs> Good one. Fish yeah. fry. So we're even now. Cool. Oh, no. My dragon's ire is never even. All right, but I'll... that'll be for something for another day. If I killed you now, I would never hear the end of it from the old man. Right. He returns you over to the rest of everyone. He returns you over to everyone else. My plan didn't work out. I was really hoping he tried to zap me. Like I got this thing in the works. Like I, I can like, I bet you anything. I can I I can dodge lightning. Wouldn't that have made him angrier? Oh, maybe, but it would have been funny. Woe turns to you. I would advise not to make the child angry. Excuse me? You're a child, Pops Ravi. He shrinks. No, shut up. He's so mad. (laughs) I can tell. What did you do? (laughs) I died. He stole it. Like, you just watch as Bliss goes by. He stole his treasure. Oh, wait. Wake, wake, wake. I also sicked a bunch of immortal uh, trogs on him. I just scooped back (laughs) a few feet. I wasn't there for that one. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) Damn it. (laughs) So. Sounds like a group of rambunctious adventurers making a very poor decision if that's how they treated you, Mr. Dragon. (laughs) He like looks down at you. What is this creature? Hi, I'm Chromagill. I was the sovereign of my circle of mushrooms back in my forest. What are a mushroom? Me. <laughs> he am. You have sentient constructs made of, he like pokes you in the stomach. Ooh. Plant dough. And look at this. Kind of like shows his frills and lets them like sparkle and be colorful. Such beauty you can only find in forests such as mine. Please don't kill us. You're like the Elton John of fungus. <laughs> You just watch as his eyes like widen and then he narrows and he like rubs his chin. Intriguing. Like you watch as Woe well, kind of just like, she has like a little staff to hold herself like, cause she is blind. She's like kind of like, she's not able to see everything, but she's got like a little bit of sight enough. She's to, getting blurry vision. She's getting blurry vision at this point. She like looks over, she like wanders over where you are and looks to Pabs and takes her staff. <laughs> ah! It's quite all right. I, I, don't see very many creatures until recently, so finding things that are fascinated with me is strange, because I'm usually the fascinated one. So, Woe turns to every... It pretty much looks to everyone around here. Please, it would be best if you could describe to us what happened here and how... And I believe we should at least explain what we're doing here. Oh, sure. Wake's just combing his hair down, trying to get it less frizzy. Uh, Woe and Pavs Ravi explained that, uh, Lieutenant Gore, uh, has been trying to find a way to close up the canal. Uh, and unfortunately, they found a way, but emissaries were blocked off from reaching them. Emissaries who could speak to an acolyte of Udoth, their plans were to close the canal with landmass and block pirates from the north from coming in. Unfortunately, for the past couple of days, Lieutenant Gore has been at wit's end fighting all invading parties coming from the north and a few slip by. That's what Pavs and Woe are for. They are the backup plan in case some slip through the canal. Hmm. Well, if you guys are looking to seal up the canal, I might know an artifact that might be able to help you, although you'll need to uh, ask kindly from its uh, people. 
An artifact, Pobs turns and looks to you. And what sort of trinket do you have that can create volcanoes or clog the land? Oh, I don't have it. But uh, funny enough, all that stuff that we took from you bought it. Uh, it actually is back on... His fist balls with lightning. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Ready's in action. Sorry, just one I am second. ready to evade. <laughs> okay, never mind. Uh, he's not going to strike you down because he knows Woe will snap back at him. Wait, she's like... <clears throat> <laughs> Get under his skin one of these days. Uh, you're on, he's well under his skin. <laughs> That's not the issue. Uh, but yeah, the... Uh, the artifact I'm referring to is known as the Collective One's Heart. Uh, you might be able to convince the yon of man, Jahal Cove to perhaps... That is who uh, the emissaries are. Their plans were supposed to be here not a few days ago, but due to the rough waters and the pirates' constant onslaught, Lieutenant Gore had asked them to stay in the town of Wright. Yeah. Until time had passed and there would be an easier moment for them to approach to perform their ritual. Well, if they continue to uh, flow in the way they are, do you expect a easier moment to arrive anytime soon? They both look to each other and shake their heads. This onslaught has been going on for 72 hours. And I don't feel it will be the last. If that was the case, Lieutenant Gore would have met with us two days ago. Hmm. Well, if that's the case, I owe the lieutenant. Is there anything that can be done by a small group of people that perhaps your uh, mighty forms cannot do? We are not allowed to let anyone from the South Seas to head up to the canal. It would be endangerment and would be, quite frankly, suicide. Why don't we send them anyway? Shut up, Pops. I am offering. Uh, Misha kind of, like, looks to you. We have something else to do. We do. And, uh, Woe kind of turns and looks to, looks over at where Misha was, and then looks back to you. You are doing something else, then. What is, what, what were you doing on this ship anyway? I believe the Navy had signed up a quarantine to at least stop any ships from flowing. Yeah, uh, see... Dot, dot, dot. Internet connection noises going <laughs> off in Wake's brain. Anyone else could chime in? I, uh, I was going to say, I think the jig is up, Wake. All right. I couldn't stay on that island anymore. My, my companions, they... I know they're out there somewhere, and I'm just looking for them anywhere. Do you mean to tell me they've met their demise? Pops is, like, grinning at that. No. I don't think they're that easily killed. <laughs> Mortals would be surprised of that. Especially this one. He reeks of death. That's because he has multiple souls in him. A vessel of Vecker, I believe. Mm-hmm. I should have died on that aisle. What aisle? Gassed aisle. He grabs you. <laughs> pulls you in close. Did you just claim that you are with them, soul? Hold on. Prop time. <laughs> uh, prop time. Show and tell. <gasps> Holds up this, the Phoenix Quadrant coin. He snatches it from your from your hand. And what does this mean to me? Gore was my superior officer. Persuasion. That is a nineteen. hands you back your coin, lets you go. Thank you. Unfortunately, the lieutenant will probably not be joining us anytime soon. Whoa, I don't believe that 
you will be in any shape to actually fight a little bit more actively. What with your condition. She has blotch, worm, says Valtara. I knew that one. I actually knew that one. I think. Woe perks up. Her face, like, beams up like, I know that voice. She turns and looks to Valtara. I know who you are as well. You didn't have a name, but you hatched and were under my care. It was with that, my medicine was able to give you sight. You just watch as this wispy fucking, like, this wispy humanoid, she drops her staff and starts, like, stumbling over and gives Valtara a hug. I'll pick she up starts her, crying. I'll pick up her staff and hold it for her. Grovigil looks over at Pavs Ravi. This is, this is how we like being talked to. I, I understand that you are a very powerful creature, but I was a mediator where I came from, and I understand that perhaps being able to more clearly communicate with those that you wish to command might bring about better reactions. It kind of points to Valtara. Persuasion. Ooh, wow. A surprise. Uh, 19. Ooh. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't enjoy taking orders from the larger worm. No one likes taking orders, but sometimes it's just the best way for things to get done. What things? I should have left this aisle long ago. I am shackled here by duty. <laughs> duty. Not now, Wake. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I just... I just think that it's worth considering that treating others with courteous and kindness, you know, might might make things work smoother for you in the future. Perhaps you wouldn't have been robbed if you would just talk to Wake. All I'm saying is once I started talking to things instead of just sitting idly by, everyone's been inviting me places and taking me on this crazy journey far away from the forest I grew up in. All I had to do was ask. I asked for my freedom back on Dragon. I was not granted it. I had to seize it by my own claws. So you tell me, Mushroom. Gotta takes a step back, feeling a little threatened. He's fucking, he's coming up on you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You tell me, Mushroom. If you were not in a position of asking for your freedom, and you were not granted it, would you have seized it for yourself, or would you have just taken orders? Wait, were you a slave? I am not speaking to you right now, fish. Per perhaps not just sat idly by, but would have tried to have communicated, to have found some sort of compromise, or, or maybe met somewhere in the middle. I understand that- Compromise I have attempted. I was young. I couldn't stand up to those who were stronger than me. And with that came abuse and pain. There was no compromise, Mushroom. It was either flee or die. Then I apologize. Your situation is very different from mine. If you knew the horrors of Gastile like I have, it would have made sense. Well, perhaps someday I will, but when I get there, I'm sure it will be because I you asked do. someone to take me. He like he like holds his hand out over towards the uh, towards the giant dead body of the demon. You've witnessed a piece of it. That was really scary. Oh yeah. There are bigger things coming. He puked himself to death. Mm hmm. It is only a matter of time before those of the North will encompass the entire Southern Sea. There is not enough of us to, there is not enough of us to defend the entire Southern Hemisphere. Those of the West cower from the Navy and they will not lend us any aid, AKA the pirates. And those of the, and those of the East ventured forth to us to close out the center. And now as more time goes by, there is no defenses to the east anymore. I fear an attack from the south is imminent. Am I circle up? Remember, uh, remember, uh, uh, Ziaka's story? 
Yeah, the, the collective, Jahal Cove is... Yeah, Jahal Cove has became a archipelago of volcanoes to push them away, but it can't do it too much because now they're going south and coming back around. Hmm. Resp, uh, Resp and Garlux are coming up from the south. I suppose it is only a matter of time, huh? But that doesn't explain why you're here. Why are you on a ship sailing out in the middle of the waters where it's the most dangerous? Just like you said, if it's coming from the south, then I better get north. The ship was heading north. And I feel like if we're heading towards safety, then that's where I'll find my friends. Roll. Uh, so here's the thing is that that's your motive, but that's not your mission. So how do you want to convey that to Pobs? Because it could be deception. Oh, it's definitely deception. It doesn't really matter. I get the same <laughs> either way. <laughs> okay. So roll me a deception check. Oh, my God. Uh... <sighs> that one. Natural wonders. Woo! Unnatural zero. Well, we're dead. I am done speaking with you. I will ask again. Why are you on this vessel? Where are you going? You sure you're done speaking to him? Is he the catalyst? I prefer the term benefactor. It's not a bad term. Then tell me, why are you traveling in deep waters? On a decommissioned Vorpal ship, pursued by demons. Woe turns and looks to you. Please, we... She, like, turns and after, like, going looking over to Valtar. She's been speaking to Valtar this whole mm -hmm. time. She, like, looks over to you, like, now hearing that. But it looks like Valtar and her have been speaking off on the side. Mitya is just, like, shrinking now, just like, I'm going to just stay the fuck back here. <laughs> back in a way. Yeah, just like the cat. And she just, like, holds her hands up and, like, Homer sinks into the crowd. The area we came from was quarantined and filled with ill people. We needed to get away from there not only to protect ourselves, but to... Help find the source of all of this madness. We, There are people who need help everywhere, and we're just trying to find answers. But the quarantine kept us from going, so we had to sneak aboard a ship. I apologize for our deception, but it was the only way for us to keep looking for answers. We're trying to help you. We're all on the same side. And how do you plan to destroy that which a dragon can't hold back? I don't know. Those are the answers we're looking for. It's just we couldn't do nothing. He turns and looks to you. Obviously, you have the answers. I thought we were done talking. I mean, I you clearly don't believe me. Quake, this is serious business. Oh, I know. Our goose is about to be cooked. <laughs> He's right. We're looking for an answer. We're looking for help in any way that we can. As you said, the pirates won't help you. But perhaps with some convincing from somebody who's assisted them in the past, maybe they can be turned to see the mutual benefit of cooperation. How do you mean how do you mean to make this cooperation work, says Woe? You have something that can gain leverage. Or am I wrong? I have past uh, relationships with these people. The reason I left right, the reason I left my temple, <clears throat> is because I believe that I can find them and I can convince them. You're right. My friends are more than likely dead. But if I can find mead or God help me, uh, oh, who's the find a boardwalk dude again? <sighs> Shit, it's, I had it written on Ezra's paper, not this one. <laughs> Lot. 
lot. Sorry. It's I knew, good. I, knew it's it was, good. I knew it was a one syllable name. No, it's fine. If I can find meat or even God help me lot. I noticed that this ship had a bunch of supplies that were going to one of his. I, I pull out two of the fake prop pistols to one of his operations, and I figured this might be a good place to start. I set down the two prop pistols. If you seek the pirates, they're all holding out in a vast, says Woe. See, I didn't know that. Now we're getting information. And I feel like if I can get to them, maybe I can convince them to work towards the common good. What exactly in Avast are you going, lad? Says Kardak. I'm not entirely sure yet. But you I have... figure the closer I get there, the, m the more I'll know. Uh, let me double check something here, because... I, I, I know I have a tool to help me find them when I get close enough, but yeah. I don't want to let that slip. Okay, fair enough. Holger uh, kind of like looks over to a lot of you. The Yith might be able to assist you with that. We do not, we are not able to give anyone guidance who we have spoken to near shores, but in deep sea waters, if that was what your means of travel was. We can grant you an easier path, one that is not rife with danger. One that, as long as you're able to reach a coastline, this one can provide a vent, can be provided a vessel. She look, they, he looks over to Beecha. Fuck what, oh. She like, her ears go down, she's like, oh, those what those voices were, weren't they? Indeed, the Yith were speaking to you, through you, we can have you sail through a... We, through you, we can have you sail through safer waters. Should you have taken a ship to that direction. Who are you talking old god messengers? She's just like looking left and right. She's like, I just... I just thought it was all just latent savant knowledge. And that is what we will grant you as a reward. I like it. I like it because I can then use it to get my job back once all this blows over. And uh, you two dragons can help with that, right? She like turns and looks over to Woe and Pazravi. What do I care for your needs? Says Pazravi. And Woe just like looks over. What do you speak of? She like holds up her ja she holds up her jacket and shows off the uh, royal emblem of uh, her noble emblem of uh, her time as a doctor. You are a physician of South Zealous, then. Was. Was. See, I, uh, was brought in on a... She like, regales her story, right. basically, of what happened. And yeah, I figure if, uh, we can assist in saving the world in some way, some reward might be due. I just wish to restore balance. Ever since this n messiness came upon us, Nothing has felt right. Nothing has felt natural. Nothing has felt correct. Yeah. I just wish to restore that. Sometimes the journey is the uh, reward you get. Holger then looks over to you. The information we have received from this one points over to Micha once more. I have peered into her mind and I have seen the visions that my brothers and sisters have tried to give to her. Though it is garbled, I, can, I believe that you are correct, Mushroom. If they... Yeah gets up a little bit like, ooh. Resp plans to use Ibercal as his destination and a location for Garlux to create his dominion. With the ashes of the Azamar, he will build a tower made of flesh and sinew, and that will spread their corruption throughout the Southern Hemisphere. Whatever you have, Whatever weapon you believe the pirates have to assist you in this situation, we only have very little time for you to enact it. Well then, best I be can, on our way. You will need a ship, and I can grant this one haste as far as I can offer that the Yith can give. Well, I'll take a ship. Pops Ravi looks over at Woe. What about the rest of these people? We need to... We need to have them be restored or returned back to their land or at least taken to safety. Uh, I, I present them with the uh, little shipping 
itinerary that I got about going up through the uh, canal. Well, I found this from them, and uh, the crew seemed to be in on this whole selling people to demons thing. Uh, also, heard rumor that the uh, demons also had a massive sea creature that they were going to feed people to. I'd be on the lookout for that one. The creature that stirred beneath Barnacle Bay now lays its eyes on the northern side of the canal. It is a undead lich shark. That sounds scary. The size of an island. That sounds... Yeah, I'd just rather not see that. Although maybe if you're close enough to it, it just won't see you. Maybe. Who knows? It claims itself Yuga Thoyeth. Bless you. If you see any who worship this creature, they are your enemy and you must strike them down. There are warlocks and others who follow Yuga Thoyeth that have spread from themselves from Barnacle Bay to the Southern Seas. I will uh, do my best. I'm trying to stay away from the whole killing that looks around him. No, no, I'll take care of that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was not so much of an order for you. That was just a warning. That is what you will be up against as you try to make your way to a vest. No more than likely, the spies of the enemy are far within reach and trying to seek out the pirates just as much as you are. Their claws have dug deep into the hearts and the minds of the pirates of the north, and they do their bidding now, most likely out of fear. Well, being surrounded by things that want me dead is not exactly new. I say, just kind of eyeing Pops Ravi. Drug. <laughs> uh... With that, let me double check something. So Kardak actually like holds his stubby little hands out for the sea charts. I hand him. He starts looking them over. Why are you going through the entire uh, archipelago, lad? There's no way in there. I don't know. You... This is just the thing I found on the uh, crew. He like shows you the one that goes to the south instead. Now this one makes sense. Though I uh. I urge you to take great caution if you're planning to go in through the entire centerfold of the archipelago, lad. I hear tale that there's a ship graveyard owned by a Grand Fay who likes to keep adding on to that little collection of hers. As much as I'm fine swimming around the ocean, my crew probably would not be the, uh, probably not be better for it. So yeah, good, good call. Bliss, uh, looks at the chart. She gets interested in this. She's like, wait a minute, how are you going to sail through the archipelago? Oh... That makes sense. I heard a rumor that there's a small little subsect of, I don't know what kind of creatures, but they're weird, soft, and squishy, like, creatures that apparently have a way for you to enter through the Underdark underwater. This might be a trail that leads you through the Underdark to the other side. Huh. Gills don't fail me now. Flex, flex. We will have you dock over by the shore. We will wait 24 hours for Lieutenant Gore to try and make some kind of rendezvous point. Take your time, have rest, collect your thoughts, and feel how you feel, and feel how you think this adventure will go in your best course of, of uh, direction. Uh, they kind of like fish you guys out from the open waters and take you over to the shoreline. From here, uh, they will off, they, they're pretty much, you're giving a chance to get, like, get off land, uh, get off, uh, to stand on the shore, uh, rest yourselves, uh, get food and water, so for the next 24 hours, you're pretty much just landlocked, uh, off on the shoreline while Pavs and, uh, Woe are waiting for Lieutenant Gore to make his way, hopefully, from the canal. Uh, you have, what, based on that information you have been given, you have what looks like three options now to travel. So the Underdark, the Fey Ship Graveyard, and what was the other one? Uh, you could route take... Route south, I think? No, route north by land. Okay. So you could take... It'll be longer, but you can walk on land and make your way in towards the... Uh, in through the archipelago via land all the way to the north. You will reach another port town. So that at least is a little bit of a nice, you know, safety precaution in your head. Like a free island is there to be at your ready should you decide to take the land land side. It is faster to cut your way through the mountain, but that would mean you have to go through the Underdark, and you'd have to ask whatever this weird, weird, squishy race that uh, Bliss is telling you about. Even she doesn't know what it is. All she knows is that 
They're weird sea-like creatures that float near the opening to the Underdark. And Kardak tells you that there is a more direct approach that you can get into the entire center of the archipelago, but you'll have to travel south and go through a graveyard that is owned by a fey creature. A ship graveyard. Hmm. So at this juncture, I will say this is where we can take a break. Cool, because it sounds like we got some stuff to discuss here, <laughs> and we'll be right back after this. Woo. Welcome back to the table. All right, so we have uh, three options to go through, and we uh, probably want to figure out some information on each one, mm -hmm. see if anybody knows much more, because uh, Wake's never been to the Underdark aside from, you know, meeting... Uh, Aside from back in, like, Jahal Cove when they <laughs> went beneath the bank, and I don't think that counts. No, it had a bunch of Underdark races that lived there, but it didn't really count so much as the Underdark. It was just like, hey, this entire subsection of the security of this island is all owned by the Underdark. Uh, beyond that, there's the safe, uh, safe path, which <laughs> is going north by land. It's just a longer just route. Yep. Takes takes a longer it time. Will, you will head over to another uh, port town just yeah. before you reach the mountainside before the archipelago. We do got some scratch yep. to spend now. It's true. We we do a uh, hell of a lot of scratch actually. And going through that way would inevitably take us through South Zealous. I thought, like, in order to get around to the side. Uh, you will still keep going. So basically, how this works is like this: at the, you're at the mouth of the canal at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, if you keep going east. You're going to hit South Zealous, and then from South Zealous, you're going to hit the next town over, and then you're just above where Avast is. Okay. So, yeah, we'd have to go through South Zealous, which, if I'm correct, you're not allowed to unless you have permission via the Navy. Right. So you could probably only reach, like, maybe some outside, like, towns or shops or cities and whatnot. Like, so, like, a township outside of the city you could go into, but then after that, it's you going through the jungle or going through the shoreline. Gotcha. Just... Hiking around Zealous. Yeah, so you're either going to be hiking through a jungle, uh, going through an underdark cavern that's underwater, or going through a ship's graveyard. Oddly enough, Wake is most comfortable with the ship graveyard just because he, that's, it's familiar water. <laughs> it's water uh, he knows he can swim. Yeah. At this point, uh, Micha is speaking with, uh, let me get his name again, I'm sorry. Do, 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 mm, 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 notes. I have a whole bunch of them. Are we talking the Yith Priest, Holger? Yes. He's going he's gonna to be speaking to, she's going to be speaking to Holger. Uh, they seem to have a lot to discuss. Uh, Valtara kind of like walked on off to speak with Woe off on the side. She's still kind of like speaking to her. Uh, but Pavs and Woe are kind of like set on guard duty at this point to make sure nothing else comes out of the uh, canal, which so far nothing has. Uh, and then there's you guys with everyone else who, everyone on the ship kind of just, like, took some time to get out on the shore and stretch their legs and stay on land for a little bit. And use all the comforts from the upstairs room instead of sleeping on the floor in a wooden bed filled with, uh, little creatures. They had a, they had a bathroom up there. We had no buckets, just corners. <laughs> like an animal. There's Kardak. Eh, I had worse things. I just leave my spores wherever they drop. Don't you? <laughs> 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 just see a little a little secretion of spores just kind of pop out of his shoulder and just just drop onto the ground. Excuse me. Whoops. <laughs> Is this rude? <sighs> it's just air sometimes builds up in my spongy body and just needs to escape in different spasms. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Bliss seemed to know about things in the Underdark. That makes me curious. I used to live where it was dark and dank and qu quiet. Maybe uh, this I is a good path. I need you to roll me a history check with advantage. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, 19. 19? Uh, you know that the Underdark is where fung uh, funglets live. And you're not too keen about that. You, the, the you going into the underdark might mean you might see some funglets, mm -hmm. which are pretty much the deep underdark cousins that you don't like of the mushroom kingdom. Unfortunately, the underdark is filled with those nasty funglet types. But I suppose that in dire times, 
So um, you can you you have all though you have all of that. So you basically all can speak to uh, anyone who was uh, on the ship that wasn't you know part of the crew or evil or an asshole. I mean, if we do end up going through the uh, face ship graveyard, I've I've had experiences dealing with some fey creatures. I mean, how'd that go? Oh, great! One of them's my pet. Uh, another one. Uh, really made me want to go fishing. I don't remember much of that one. Leg scale bound, you live an interesting life. Yes, I have. But yeah, <laughs> uh, fake creatures, you know, they... they uh, Stares off at the distance. Oh, it's like that fucking scene from... Uh, it's, like an, it's like an LSD flashback, but with it. <laughs> I, I figured it's like that fucking scene from, uh, from Simpsons. I can't possibly solve this mystery. Can you... you? Or it's like the dog with the cupcake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, my fear with the ship graveyard, though, is should our ship end up there, we'll be in a much slower route, and it sounds like that's a that's a very big possibility. And it seems time is of the essence. Well, then, like then, I said, you can speak to anyone, any one of the NPCs at this point. You have all the hours in the world to speak to people. All of the hours. Well, and what's no, left time of the is world. of the essence. We well, the yeah, time is of the essence for the next, for maybe like the next couple of hours before you all get to go to sleep and yeah. not have to worry about fighting. All right. Uh, it was Kardak that mentioned the face ship graveyard route. Kardak spoke of the face ship graveyard. Yes. All right. Yeah. He's he seems like uh, I, I, I'm going to go try to collect more information on that from him. Okay. Uh, well, at this point, I believe we should all roll initiative to see who gets to talk to who first. Sure. Well, we could all travel together, too. I mean, that's fair if people want to. <laughs> I got, I got, I've got no one else I'm really talking to, but so yeah, I, I'm, I'm fine also going together. Listen, so that way we can, that way we can all contribute to the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Sure, why not? All right, so you want to speak to Kardak first? Uh, Kardak, uh, after you guys finally got on shore, has taken to just building a small little fireplace and uh, smoking some, uh, smoking from his pipe at this point, just like stretching his legs out and looks over to you. He waves his prosthetic claw. Hi. Hey, uh, so you made mention of a, a ship graveyard of sorts that's a fairly quick way to get to a vast, as opposed to, you know, traveling via land. Hmm. Well, I don't understand why you wouldn't want to travel through land, lad. The hospitality of the dwarves is quite great. Oh, ab absolutely. I've never met a dwarf that I've disagreed with. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Just, if time is truly of the essence, which uh, the uh, dragons over there make it seem like it is, probably be best to, at the very least, consider the median speed route. Mm. Well, if you're wanting to get there quite fast, then all I have to tell you is that you just want to be careful of those high elves. They got, a they got some uh, hideouts along there and don't really let a lot of people inside. And then if you get past that... There is a true fey that lives out near the archipelago, and that's where the ship graveyard is. Yeah, you are. I hear uh... she shrinks ships, tries to bottle them, and then reapplies them back out into the water once the crew has been dealt with. And anything she finds of use or of little knickknacks of treasure that you'd be carrying, well, that just goes into her private collection then, lad. Hmm. 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 You ever uh, know anybody that's seen this creature? I know someone who went out there and tried to make peace with her. Poor lad never came back. He'd be about 300 if it not for that witch. Fair enough. That, uh... Hard to imagine such a fun, fanciful hobby could come from such a terrifying creature. Bottled ships are so fun. It's a shame she has to do it with real ones. Yeah. Sounds, Morgan, uh, you look a little perplexed at that. You know about bottled ships? Of course! Travelers come by my woods all the time and show me their different trinkets from their travels. Huh. Is that not a common practice? I, I, Just seemed like a fun I, display. I, I didn't picture you in the type to enjoy bottled ships. I mean, I don't personally have one, but, you know. Huh. They seem fun. If we did stop by this place, you might be able to get one that was a real ship at one point. That's true, but that would also carry with it a lot of tragedy. Perhaps I'll just find one in a shop later. Yeah, also works. Well, you can make one, lad. You ever take the glass blowing? No. Is that 
Ah, oh, right, no mouth. He looks over to Morgan and he says <laughs> he's wiping his mouth. Ah, that would do it. It's kind of lets out as we were talking earlier, just one of those little gaseous mushroom farts, I guess. <laughs> would, I mean, the card act just goes, I mean, does that work if you stuck the, the glass blowing through your gills? I mean, you'd probably end up with a lot of spores in the glass. I don't know if this would. I mean, it would be a, ter- a, ter- a terrarium. <laughs> You ever been to the terrariums, lad? That I don't know. That is a you term house, beyond me. Yeah. Oh, I, I, let's see how fucked up this is. It's where you house plants and other things inside bottles. Uh. <laughs> you set me free, father. But but Rama. you take care of them in there, right? They're, they're, they create they're... their own little biome, of course. Well, I guess that, that that's not so bad. They make their own little ecosystem inside the bottle. And eventually they'll they'll grow and escape the bottle and, and get to just prog- prog- progress their natural lives, right? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, nothing wrong there. I suppose so. Of yeah. this I will abide. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> Kardak just take a hit of his pipe. Eh, I... Were I to be upset about every plant that was used for some fleshy creature's needs, none of you would be left. Trust me, it's <laughs> fine. <laughs> Oddly threatening, lad. Good to know. I'm just saying. So, of nature out. Pretty sure. much what you got out of that is that you could, you could head over to the the town up north, which is a dwarven settlement. All right. So up north there is a dwarven settlement. Uh, they might be able to help you actually get through the, uh, over the mountainside if you speak to them. Uh, Bliss was the one who knew about the play, the, uh, Underdark path that's underneath the water. Or at least heard rumors about it, and Kardak told you pretty much about the ship graveyard. And he's not too fond of high elves. Ships. High elves. And an archfey that lives off the coastline. I, I, I made mention of that one first. <laughs> I'm gonna do a, uh, a history check real quick. Does Cromagel have any idea if there is any sort of like history or typical, uh, let's say, predilections to uh, aggression between dwarves and elves? Uh, does a 13 tell me anything? Um, they don't really like super, super hate each other. It's just that one society clashes with the other. Okay. They they accept each other from a distance, but after a while, if they're like in the the vicinity of each other, one's gonna get more rambunctious than the other. One's gonna get more snooty than the mm. other, and just inevitably conflict will happen if they have to share con- space. Con- but they yeah, don't conflict will happen. Hate each other. But it's not going to be like it's gonna start a war. You okay. just know that over the generations of your growth, that you've seen dwarves and elves not get along every once in a great while. I like I- to imagine that these two stories coincide. Look at this <laughs> ship I got from this stupid f***ing elf! Well, that's <laughs> basically what I was thinking. It was just going to be a, like, are these two exaggerating the, the stories at each other's sides? But it sounds like, as far as I can tell, dwarves and elves don't hate each other that much. They don't hate each other that much, but they will, like, listen... Dwarves insult everyone. Yeah. Zo- dwarves and elves are pretty xenophobic of each other. D and D racism. D and mm-hmm. dude, it's it's fucking D and D. What do you in. expect? Dude, especially high elves. They hate everyone. Fuck. Oh yeah. High elves just fucking hate everyone that exists. They even hate. They even hate other elves if they're poor. It's the only reason I could never join the Empire side in Skyrim. It's just like <laughs> you have to side with the elves. I'm like, but they're all assholes. They're all dicks. They're Why would you ever? They're even a dick to you if you are a high elf. It's like, what's the point? Apparently, from what I'm told, is that if you play an elf in D&D, you're basically making yourself the equivalency of making a human gray. Mm. Like, you have, like, these weird alien powers that no average human should have. Yeah. So you're seen as a gray. <laughs> it's weird, but that kind of makes sense. Yeah. All right, so the uh, other route that I guess we'd figure out is through Bliss, through the Underdark. I, I mean, wish... I wish to speak about the Underdark with Bliss. Let's let's find her. Bliss is... <laughs> yeah. Transition! At this point, Bliss is uh, sitting not at the same campfire, but she's sitting near the boat, like, looking over all the stuff that she found when she hears you guys kind of stumbling towards her. Oh, it's you. Hey. Hello. I was very curious. You, se- you seem to have knowledge of the Underdark from, from your travels. Perhaps we'll be going that way, and I was wondering if there was anything special you'd want to tell us about it. Hmm. 
nothing too out of the ordinary when it comes to the Underdark. You have some things down there that don't like light. You have uh, your basic standard drow interactions if you ever speak with them. Just always remember that you gotta pray spiders. Good, good to know. Spiders, I don't necessarily have a problem with them. Uh, the only strange thing is that I hear that there is a subsect of the ocean that has made a small ecosystem in the Underdark that not most who live in the Underdark try to venture into, but not flumps, but these weird, squishy creatures that almost look like flumps, and they're very colorful. No one dares to go near them because anytime you go near the water, it gets really acidic, but they're kind folk if you speak to them. I've never seen them myself. So they're kind, but they just live in... Acid. Yes. Well, apparently it's told that they uh, they live, like, basically they live outside of the entrance to the Underdark, but they just swim into it sometimes to find food. Hmm. But they're kind enough folk if you ever see them. It's just that I don't live underwater, so I've never seen such a creature. Oh. And any time they're described to me, it just sounds like a flump that lives underwater. Huh. But nothing spectacularly dangerous or... Well, just don't, spelling immediate don't try to get travels. behind them or don't try to drink the water they're in. Hmm. Well, that sounds simple enough to avoid. I'll just try not to breathe it either, probably. But yeah. that's the thing, though. If you're going to be traveling underwater with their guidance, that's going to be an issue. Hmm. And that the only be. way inside the Underdark through the way that I was told, or based on that sea chart, is going into the Underdark, where it's flooded. Wake, you can manipulate water, right? Not that much. I oh. can't, I can... Like, I, I just start, like, flo floating, like, water around in my hands. Like, I can manipulate it here, but when we go down there, I can't just make a bubble. Seems to me like you need a water-breathing spell. Or at least for them, anyway. Yeah, probably. And unfortunately, I don't have that. Baltaro? Maybe. Or Misha? Maybe. I don't really... That or there could just be... There are plenty of people on this ship. Perhaps any of them had something that could help. Maybe hmm. somebody has like a scroll or something. I mean, you don't have a mouth, so I'm not entirely sure how the... I do still need to take in air for nutrients and survival, but... That goes through his gills. Yeah. Hmm. So being completely submerged would, would still be dangerous, but I... I I'll be honest with you, I've never really had to try. You felt rain. You just, you've yeah, I've I felt never, rain, but he's you've just never, never, like, you've never gone deep underwater, is I guess what he's saying. Yeah, you've never conceived the idea of you completely submerged in water. Yeah, the closest you got was probably that... The bog. Bl yeah, yeah. The, the blood that was like rising up around you. All I understand is I, I, I do still need air. It's just I might be able to hold my breath for considerable long amounts of time or not at all. And testing it seems like one of those you try it once and if you fail, you shouldn't have tried kind <laughs> of things. Well, I mean, you could speak to the elves or the dwarves that live near the mountainside just that blocks off the archipelago. Hmm. I know there's a town just a little up to the north. I think hmm. that's where uh, Kardak said he was from. At the worst case scenario, we can at least stop there before we head out which way we want to go. Hmm. So that does sound like the good, like the best, most logical first step. It gets us closer to our objective while not actively getting us away from any other options we'd really need to take, at least by too far. It would probably take you a day away if you were trying to get there as quickly as possible. And most likely you'll have a better chance of finding a ship there. Not like the quarantine zone that was back over by the canal. This place is just completely dangerous. But then again, I haven't been over that way in quite some time, and I don't know if a vast is just as horrible in a shape as the Emerald Canal is so far. Well, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it, I suppose. Or the lack of a bridge, depending on the situation. Yeah, if the bridges have burned down, then what are you going to do? Hmm. Jump? Yeah, jumping makes sense. <laughs> She just like looks to you and like kind of smiles and like holds up a scroll to jump. I'll sell it to you for a hundred. I I can I can kind of do that on my own actually. Chroma Gill presents seventy five gold pieces. I believe this is what they call bargaining. Tink 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 tink. We're gonna need a little bit something more yeah. than just that though. That's only you're missing maybe twenty five pieces there, Fred. 
How many do you have? Why you I, a I, cop? I'm just <laughs> I was. I would like to say that we're. <laughs> you're, you're, the, the, I'm sorry. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna roll an intelligence check on Wake here. <laughs> if he's gonna step in on this bad choice. No, he's not gonna mention the fact that she's trying to sell you something for a hypothetical bridge to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, she just, like, looks to you, and, like, you see, like, the, the sullen eye, like, sh- the happy-go-lucky face all of a sudden, like, the cat slit eyes. What are you, a cop? I was. Mm, I don't like that, then. You don't get the scroll. Yeah. Just scoops back up his 75 gold. Okay, I was just curious. If you have anything else to trade, I mean, I have plenty of stuff in the pack. I've been all over the place. Eh, not so much being a uh, opera singer done me any good in South Zealous, anyway. Chromagill is kind of low on... He doesn't exactly pick stuff up and keep things, so he, the 75 gold is really all he's willing to trade if that's not good enough for him. Well, roll Persuasion if you want to tr- really try to hard sell that. Uh, 60. 16. Let me roll for Bliss's Insight. I mean, do you need it? Not really. She hands it to you for, 20, for 75. Yeah, problem solved. <laughs> You now have a scroll of jump. Neat. Let's see how much ups this mushroom's gonna get later. (laughs) So I figured the one thing I probably couldn't do very well is leap. Well, if there's anything else you need some information out of me, I'm sure I can give you a little bit of some knowledge. I have been out that way before. Are there any, is there anything that appears not dangerous, but actually is very dangerous? (laughs) That's a tricky question. I know there's a couple of, uh, there are these weird jellyfish-like creatures that almost are the size, like, they're almost the size of cows, but they're mana wars. They don't seem too deadly, but if you turn your back on them, they will strike. And they don't just stay in the water, either. Hmm. So they... Fly. Oh, that's... Oh, that's, that's so cool. Much worse than me. I thought they were just going to walk. Well, just get them into direct sunlight, and they'll get off you as quick as possible. Okay, sunlight. Never mm-hmm. been a big fan myself, but understood. If anything else, I mean, there's always the uh, slave trade for the, that the drows always do, but that's the really, really deep under dark drow. You can hear some knuckles crack from Wake's fists. The ones that... Hmm, praise the spiders a little too much. Maybe even become part spiders. Ever heard of driders before? History check. Morgan, you get advantage. Somehow Wake has at 18, or I'm assuming he has. 16 for me. Mm. That's a 10. Really? You have a basic understanding. Like, you've you've heard it before, and you two hear that, hmm... No, that checks out. Through passing in a lot of the Adventurers, Adventurers Guild, you've heard people have to deal with uh, driders before. You've heard this before because the fu- any funglets or any mushrooms that have spoken to you before have said there are elves that align themselves with dark gods that make them part spider. I've heard of these horrible beasts. They have lots of legs. Juice. Yep, drow, top, spider, bottom. Well, I mean, if you have something you want to trade them, I'm sure they could be reasoned with, but I wouldn't put it past them if they just decide to take all of you in one go. Yeah. But that's really, really deep, right? That's very deep. Extremely deep. Deep enough that you'd be seeing the Vastrati at that point. I'm 12 and this is deep. (laughs) And uh, if you start seeing the Vastrati at that point, you're probably a few miles above hell. 14 uh, in a history check. It was Vastrati. <laughs> they are blind. Su- they are a blind sub race of humanoid creatures that have tremor sense. They don't need. They have no eyes, but they. I'm gonna fucking quote Torok too, and I can't believe that this has come this way. Torok they can evolution. He- they can hear the beat of a heart and smell blood from a great distance without actually having to look. Okay. Sounds like a crew I don't want to mess with. Hmm. Well, they don't get much visitors, from what I'm told, even though drow keep themselves away from them. Yeah, well, they, they seem really deep down, and I don't know, maybe maybe our path won't take us that far, but if it does, at least now we're aware of them. Should we go that way? Sounds like. If a you're looking for friends, at least seek effort in finding dwarves down there. They're friendly types to any one of the surface dwellers. Even if they don't seem it. 
especially the the uh, the underdark gnomes, the Swivelblin. I'm, I'm so terrible at describing their names, but they're tinkerers at heart. And I don't know if you're kind of in favor of science like the pirates are, they'd be right up your alley. No. Oh. We'll see. Maybe we'll get some more information in town on uh, some people that may have actually traveled these ways before. Hmm. If you go topside, you're probably going to see the high elves. So we've heard. Yeah, just hoity-toity guys. They they don't like anyone. I don't think they mean ill of it. Just that's just in their nature. Can't help themselves. Just like how sometimes people tell us that <laughs> tieflings are just nothing but horn dogs or creatures that are just a full of sin and thievery. What are the chances, right? Don't touch my shit. Cop. My, my prize student is a Ex. tiefling. I'm kidding. She like looks to you just like, I literally just told you the stereotype. Why would I enforce it? Yeah. Perhaps. She pats you on the shoulder. Perhaps it's just part of your song. Maybe that's it's a it's a fun turn of phrase. You tell us the stereotype, and then it turns out you. I don't know. I music is new to me. Words carry very powerful messages, my friend. If I was to say that in my songs and spread it across, what good would be singing my own songs if I was belittling myself? You you make a fair point. I'm here to make money, not so much uh, scare my customers away. Makes sense. Hmm. Make a living during the apocalypse. Everybody hey, if, has to. If we're all going to sink, I mean, worst case scenario, all I got to do is just pretend like I'm one of them. I mean, I'm part tiefling. Hmm. My mother was a human. I was more tiefling. I got that from my dad's side. Hmm. Chromagill considers the biology of such and just leaves it alone. You want to roll a nature check? Sure. Uh, 15. You've heard in passing from other people speak that people who uh, tend to mix interspecies with uh, breeding, mm -hmm. uh, they are called muddles. Okay. He's so, not... so a half-elf is technically a muddle, but they're so higher up and very common that they kind of just take that as a derogatory they, term and they, just move on with their lives. They become their own subclass. So like a half-dwarf would be considered a muddle. Mm. Gromagill's not going to say muddle, <laughs> but he's going to think about it. You know what it is. Yeah. Well, thank you, Bliss. I I don't know if there's much information. It, if you have no other information you find super important to divulge, should we travel that way? I, I no, appreciate your cooperation. No, there is one more thing. Oh. Do any of you have any ranged abilities on you should you go up the mountainside? My spores can travel a good 30 feet on a good day sometimes. Uh, I mean, how, you might want ranged, something like him. How ranged are we talking? Uh, we're talking some pretty good range. Maybe hmm, a longbow or militaristic rifle because uh, those mountainsides are where all the rocks come from. I can throw these things like 90 feet. I like start like pulling it, like looking it over my daggers, my shark teeth daggers. I mean, if you think that's enough to take down a giant, I don't know, ballista sized eagle with two heads, then by all means. Maybe. This sounds like a very strange creature. What? <laughs> it's a rock. It's a rock deer. Uh, they deliver mail. Oh, the R O C, not R O C K. Oh, okay. I was confused. A, a flying two-headed stone seemed odd. No, okay. that's a golem, and those exist. I, there is much in this world for me to witness. I've seen a lot of it. Not all of it, but I've seen a lot. Hmm. So you pretty much got your information on that of the surrounding area. Uh, she hasn't gone south enough to know what's going on with the... Uh, with the High Elves and the uh, the True Fae. That was more uh, Kardak's deal. However, she does tell you about people in the Underdark. She tells you about the passage. And uh, while not dangerous as a in a diplomatic sense, in a physical sense, they're very dangerous, these flumps mm -hmm. of sea Crete-like of sea Crete -like creatures. And they don't, they don't mean us harm, but their physiology just will anyway. Yes. Squishy acid flumps and drow. Yeah, plus... 
creepy if, spider. If you're people. in the Underdark, seek the Swivelblin and the. Uh, I'm sorry if I got that completely wrong, but Swivelblin. Yeah, Swivelblin and uh, the dwarves. They will be your best bet of figuring out anything, guiding you out of any situation. And uh, Drow are uh, negotiable, but not those who are really deep in spiders. Mm. What about the spider them arachnid life? Yep. Who else should we talk to, if anyone? Yeah, you gotta, says to the crew. <laughs> you got a whole bunch of other people still to talk to if you want yeah. to. Uh, the. Uh, you want me to go down the list just so I can refresh everyone? Well, the one, the uh, only other one I was thinking of is the one that Micha is talking to. Uh, but uh, oh. I'm, I'm gonna go check on the uh, just just for my sake. I'm gonna go check on the deep roots. Uh, uh, the deep roots are huddled up uh, with each other. Uh, the wife and the child are finally asleep. Uh, Marlo is awake right now. Uh, Cleva and uh, and Mr. Schlorg are all at the fireplace that they're at right now. I was just gonna check and see, like you know, how the baby was doing, like with, uh, whether the fever is broke yet or not. She still got a little bit of a fever, but the fresh air is doing her good. Good. Uh, she's asleep right now. Marlo looks up to you, just like very relaxed, like the most relaxed he's ever been since this entire ride. You've earned a rest. Uh, you should probably take it when you get it. We are very close to... Uh, we are very close to Zealous. I know a few people who might be able to help us in this situation, but it's good to be on land, and it's good to know that there are naval dragons assisting us and guarding us for the night. Hey, uh... If you pretend to hate me, the, uh... The male might actually be more, uh, attentive in helping you get there. How could I possibly hate you? You pretty much saved our lives. Just trust me, he hates me a lot. So if you, uh... You seem a little suicidal if you want to invoke the ire of a dragon. I just, I, I, I just really want to test something. I, I feel like I can, you know... Ever since I felt what it was like to be really, really fast, I feel like I can dodge some lightning, and I just... I don't know. Maybe I am suicidal. I don't Teddy know. Teddy like, holds up his pistol. I could do that. Yeah, but I'd really like to surprise him if he just, like, freaks out about it. Oh, uh, well, it looks like the pepper gun's not going to use yet. Not yet. Teddy's kind of, like, was, like, excited. He's like, remember, he's Mr. Make War Fun. Chromagill walks over to Teddy. Is that a gun? <laughs> just <laughs> you were holding... <laughs> Well, yeah, they were holding on to my possessions when we were held down there. I'm surprised none of you actually took it on the battle. Uh, Crowigal kind of like pulls up his kind of weird, mushroomy, misshapen hands. I've never been able to wield such a thing, especially because they're usually manufactured with metal, and I, I don't like to touch that. But you seem to be someone who, who builds and customizes such weapons. Indeed. Well, I've been thumbing over a couple of my blueprints I was about to sell off, and... For the sake of the fact that you all saved me, I wouldn't mind parting my ways with some of my more experimental things. Do you have anything that would... Kind of just holds his hands out and kind of shows that he can sort of shape them, but not a ton. They're always going to be kind of chunky-looking things. Mm. Is there any sort of me mechanism that could work for me? It seems that perhaps one of our travels might take us somewhere. Distance might be an advantage to have on an opponent, and if I could have some means to attack from a range... Well, you seem to be the man who I would ask. Oh, that would just be a simple crossbow at that point, wouldn't it? Oh, you don't know what that is. That's right. <laughs> just Here. stares. Yeah, just like... He like Slow blink. <laughs> he like show, he shows Maybe? you. Maybe? Well, it might be a little difficult to try and make one out of pure wood, but it is possible. Unless you don't mind a few, I don't know, metal screws or a little bits and bobs to at least hold the piece together here and there. But he shows you a light crossbow. Oh, yes. Okay. You are proficient in those, so that does work. All right, then, yes, something like this would, would work marvelously, in fact. Oh, well, I'm sure you could you could absolutely keep that one. I am not in any place to tell my benefactors or my rescuers to tell me that I can't, they can't have something of mine. Oh, well, th well thank you very much. Yes, Teddy, if, you, if you're okay with me keeping this, I, I shall. Consider it a gift. <gasps> thank you. <laughs> Just kind of takes it. Just remember... <laughs> Make sure whatever you're using it for is always fun. He like pats the little emblem on the side of, of the crossbow. It's a, a cartoon depiction of his face and it says Schlorg Industries. Survival is fun. 
<laughs> I just imagine you like it's morphed onto your hand. It just <laughs> fires when you need it to. Wrath. Yeah, Stranger's Wrath. Fuck yeah. Hmm. Is there anything else I can help you boys with? I will say, Mr. Slorg, those chromatic rounds came in handy. Ah, you found some good use for them. That's good. I've been trying really hard to patent those off to those higher-up snooty little boys up there up on the top of the towers in uh, Old Zealous. Hmm. They didn't really take to it because they're not really keen on uh, unwieldy science. Not like those pirate fellows. I have sold a couple of weapons to those boys, I'll tell you that much. Hmm. Well, I don't know if you saw on the deck of the ship, but those rounds did wonders. Oh, would you like another box? You know what? I would. Here you are, son. Free of charge. Thank you very much, Mr. He gives you another 12 rounds. Sweet. Thank you kindly, Mr. Slorg. And how about you, young man? I've, I've never been much for firearms or... Anything that I don't wield with my own two hands, frankly. Oh, well, that's not that's not no problem. I'm willing to part one of my uh, experimental blueprints to you, if you would like. How experimental? He shows you the paperwork that, uh, that Bliss was looking at before. He's offering you to choose any one of the weapons that you could sell off to anyone who would find it useful. Okay. Oh, I've, they're just they're just playthings. I did these over a weekend. They're very quite sound. I'm I'm very good at my craft, you see, but it's just finding someone who would want to take these and build it. All right. So, uh, if I recall correctly, one was called the Umbrella Launcher. Uh, you have the Brine Shot, which looks like it looks like a cannon that takes up almost the entire center of a port side of a ship. Yeah. Uh, it is a. It looks like it's a metal hull. And uh, when it shoots out, it actually shoots out a torrent of water that almost is as concussive as entire tidal wave. So a water cannon. Gotcha. Big old water gun. Big old water cannon. Anchor flail. Uh, your entire side of your ship pretty much just creates a flail that is movable that has anchors at the end of it on both sides of the ship. Okay. Uh, the Slorg shot, which is basically a cannon that is fitted. It's cannons that are fitted to fire chromatic shots, but just cannon sized. Okay. Chromatic cannon rounds. And the umbrella cannon. This is a little bit more expensive, a little bit more weird. It looks like a weird cone shaped dome that's, that is fitted to the side of the entire side of the ship. It generates sunlight and fires it like a cannon. Wake narrows in on that one. This one looks interesting. He pretty much explains to you what it does and... Solar fl solar it, beam. It is a solar beam cannon, yes. Theoretically, he believes that if this weapon had enough time to fire and gather enough sunlight, theoretically, it could pretty much crack a Vorpal warship in half. Well, Wake in his uh, fan fiction of hunting vampires once thought of something like that. He's like, oh my god, it's like from my note. <laughs> my, uh, uh, I'll take that one. Absolutely, here you go. All right. You have the blueprints for a umbrella cannon. Umbrella cannon blueprints. I have to refigure out these notes. Luckily, we leveled up, so I have a reason to redo them. Mm -hmm. Umbrella, Umbrella Cannon was the European version of Umbrella Chronicles. <laughs> I'm so glad you made that gag. I'm I, I sat there th ever since you said Umbrella Cannon. I was trying to figure out how to tie it back. Just like all of a sudden, like That's you watch the come up with. I'm opens sorry. up the cannon, like it comes out, opens up. Grass! <laughs> Grass! <laughs> all right, so like I said, uh, Unless you have anything else you want to ask uh, Mr. Slorg, or if there's anything else you would like to get out of him so far. He doesn't have a lot in terms of, like, weaponry to sell, but, like I said, he'll give you as much information or anything else you would like to talk to him about. He is a very well-known person throughout most of South Zealous. Remember, he's the guy who puts fun in warfare. You probably know a person named uh, Gentle, don't you? 
Gentle, gentle. Mm. Name's not ringing a bell. How Jelly about a description? Fi Jellyfish lady really likes to end oh, wars. Oh, yes! I remember once upon a time I gave her a staff of incredible power. Incredible power. I remember it was fun. It was a nice little hook-shaped uh, staff that when you pulled it apart, the blade came out in any sort of element that you chose. It broke very easily, unfortunately. She's very destructive with my craft, but she sold the pretty penny, so as long as she found fun in it, yeah, she finds a lot of fun in it. Mm. She's a very, not common, I'd say every decade or so she appears and likes to take a look at my wares. So she's old, too. Oh, I've been in business with her at least 50 years now. Man, how long do we live? <laughs> Wake has that dog looking past the cupcake <laughs> look in his eyes again. <laughs> I don't know enough about my own people. What a child, says the mini millennial. <laughs> <laughs> Just a baby. <laughs> Infants, all of you. And yet you teach me so much. The wisdom of youth is wasted on you. I'm only 19. Oh. <laughs> Ow. Old man Chromagill. <laughs> He's just this old man along for the ride, but he's, you know, got the got the spryness of a Happy youthful body. Grandpa. Yeah, for sure. Oh. But what do you uh why do you ask, son? Oh, just I've I've had a few uh paths. I've I've had my paths crossed with her a number of times and uh I just figure you're both in the business of war, her I remember she was them. uh I do remember one thing though that didn't quite work out. There was one time where one of our deals went a little sour. She, I believe she took on a mission from somewhere, something about annihilating some grand fae off to the distance near a vast, but was, I, I know what you're thinking, son. I've been overhearing that conversation you had, uh -huh. but I'd advise against it because the weapons I tried to use, an old crone took them down. And when I say crone, I mean a witch, a hag. I've known a few of them too. One specifically. God, I miss her. She makes such good food. Oh, I thought you were talking about the one that was trapped under that cabin in the in the woods. No, that was a that was a different one. Okay. That one that one's food sucked. I don't eat food, but one I agree. Who makes food? What is her cooking like, son? Oh, it's great. Like whatever I pull out of the ocean, she can make anything out of it. It's great. I I just go down there. I I I, I once ended up with literally rocks. Just rocks covered in algae, and she made this amazing steak. I don't know where it came from. Variable. Is that the one you, you're married to? I don't really know the specifics. The moment you say that, Morgan, fucking Teddy Schlorg's face just excalibers. It's a contract. I, I... He puts his mouth... He puts his hand to your mouth. Mm. I know who you speak of. Oh. Moves. Why'd you shut me up? <laughs> I don't know if she's looking, son. Have you ever seen her before? She's one of the most omnipotent crones in the entire place. She's the entire leader of the Green Hags. You gotta keep she her She runs the coven. Wow, that's great. What do you mean that's great? She's not here at... She's not here right now, is she? Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've, I've been up a couple Green times. Hags? Really? Yes? I don't know what that is. Just asking. Uh, roll a natural. I, I roll did a, a natural! A nature. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, okay, well, I rolled a history check, and I got a two. Oh, a history? Uh, I, rolled a, I rolled a two on a history check, which is why I just asked. Mm. But uh, if you want me to roll a nature check, let me see what that... All right, that gets a bit better. Uh, that is a modified 20. Hags, uh, hags of the Green Coven are nature hags. They, oh, uh, yes, they're great. Yeah, uh, you know not to invoke their ire, but they pretty much draw all their power from all the corruption and negative energy that comes from the nature itself. But they also then channel it to do good or to do whatever. So every, every, every hag from the uh, circle of uh, the Coven of Green all have different agendas. Okay. Uh, this one pretty much sounds like that she might be in the service of Kelpie in some way if she's a sea hag. Well, when I met her, she was literally locked up on a ship out towards uh, Jahal Cove. Then 
I... Oh, that poor bastard. Yeah, I, I, I kind of beat him in a game of chance and pretended like I ponder off that our relationship was moved on. Oh, yeah, I did the same thing. And then she worked on our ship for a while and made these awesome food. Like, no, nobody else seemed to eat all of theirs, so I got, like, seconds a lot of time. It was great. He holds up, a, he holds up his wallet, shows a folded-up picture. They look like old war photos. He points over to one where a guy's entire side of his body looks like it's been caved in with an ice cream scooper, and there's burn wounds all over the side of his chest. That's what happened with one of her cooking, son. Can't say we've ever seen that result, but everything I've had has just tasted great. It'll be a matter of time. You really should write a book after all this. Oh, I've written... Yeah, maybe. Morgan, <laughs> Morgan, there's a... There looks like a snowman made out of sand off in the distance with an old woman's head that only you can see. As far as you can tell. <laughs> I think that's her, Morgan. Shut up. Wait, what? Wait, looks over his shoulder. There's nothing there. Morgan, it's gone. This is the necklace starts Morgan time. <laughs> it's, it's Morgan time. Oh, Grammy. These green hags, they... They're powerful creatures, but I, I feel that they, well, eh, I suppose they're not mostly good, but they've, I've seen them do plenty of good, or you heard tale of it. You've met the nice ones. There are some very bad hags out there. Very nasty hags. Hags who uh, wouldn't think twice that to eat your guts right in front of you. Oh. Yeah, I, uh, I pawned that off years ago, let me tell you. All right. Sucker! <laughs> <laughs> looks like Finger someone guns. Goes. He just, like, looks to you, he goes, that's good, whatever you, you do you, man. I will. Well, thank you again for the crossbow. I, I'm ready to try and learn you this. You only have 12 bolts with it. Okay. So, yeah, haven't had to keep track of ammo in a good long while. Unless there's anyone else you want to talk to, you pretty much could go ahead and take your rest as Pops, Ravi, and Woe pretty much spend the night uh, making sure you guys are okay. You have been awake for almost an entire day at this point. All right. So you guys <laughs> make yourselves a nice little uh, makeshift cabin or use the ship itself to find a place to sleep that's not infested with bugs. And uh, oh, hmm? Go on. Uh, the, the land we're on... Uh, would there be any sort of, like, any trees or anything for... Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. I didn't know if we were on, like... You're, a... you're on the shoreline. There's, like, a little bit of a jungle off to the distance. We're just that... going to sleep in the shallows of the ocean. Chromagill just goes to any place that's, like, very shaded by trees, but not too deep in, in case there's creatures in there, but, like, on kind of on the... You have a couple of snakes, uh, like, constrictor snakes off on the top of the tree. You got a monkey. You got, like, two or three monkeys off to the left that kind of just, like, look back and forth and go... I like, just start poking at your flabs. Hello, oh, yes! <laughs> I'm going to... Well, they wouldn't have heard that. I didn't sp spit any spores on them, but I would have reacted, I guess. I would have yeah. just kind of waved, like, Hello. which freaked them out. Uh, just kind of sits down and just does the closest thing to sleeping that he does, which is just empty his mind. And Exist. Just, <laughs> and just be there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Morgan, I'm sure you want to sleep in a bed. Yeah. And this is where we'll end for tonight. All right. Uh, wait, no, actually, before we do, I'm okay. sorry. Did you decide on what route you want to take? I need to know. Uh, I feel like we were going to go to the town first and see if we could gather more information and resupply. Uh, I, I'm still leaning towards the Fey graveyard, personally, but if only because that sounds enticing. Like I said. It, it does sound enticing, but we've been on the water for a while, and maybe a, a trek on land might be a good break. Just my two cents? I, I, I'm all for hearing uh, the conversation I, here. I, I, I would say... God I, help me if you say Underdark. <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yeah! Oh, we're splitting it. <laughs> I was I was going to say, uh, if if we're coming down to what character would fight for, Chromagill would be like, Underdark seems fast and not too dangerous. Makes, makes the most sense. This makes so much sense for each of our characters. Like, hey, water, that makes sense to me. No, land, please. <laughs> I like the dark. Oh, my God. Going underground so, seems so good. We, we have split... A part of this, I'm gonna leave this open until next week. Then, okay. I I just know you have to prep stuff, so if that's okay to, for you. I do. Well, I do have to prep, but 
If you okay. know the first chunk of it's probably gonna be us debating where to go, you might not have to get too deep into whatever You know what, that's fair. All right, is. above ground, I need you guys to make a choice now. <laughs> that's... I need you to make a choice right now. Oh, oh shit. Okay, what are our reasoning? You you want to be on land just because well it's... because there's it's not just that but there's uh there's uh towns and outskirts where we can resupply you know there's also other mortal races that can help us like the dwarves especially and we'll be going with um Kardak that's where his town is so that's one thing. What about you? What's your logic for the Underdark? For Chromagill, it just sounds like Underdark sounds like, at, at least I, I was given the impression, seemed like a pretty quick route uh, and doesn't sound super dangerous. And also, Chromagill just likes likes darker places, so that naturally sounded more enticing. But his his main logic to it is, it seemed quick and of the of the choices had the least had the least guaranteed danger. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, let me go. Let me go ahead and just give you this then. Town, safest route, longest time. Yeah. Underdark. Moderate, mod moderate danger, moderate time. So the Ship sea route is oh, the is, most is dangerous. The okay, so it is okay, the fastest. If, if he knows it's the fastest, then he'd be he'd be sway. He can yeah, because that, that, that that's way. that's where Wake's going. It's most like, yeah. So sea graveyard, most dangerous but fastest way through. So you to wake, get where you need to go. Wake would definitely be on the route for like this is the quickest. We need to get there. We need to get this before towns get destroyed, and. Uh, Furthermore, he's much more comfortable on the water than he is in any other environment. Yeah. I will say this, though. If you do take the land route, you will be by the shoreline, so there is water. Yeah, but it also sounds like we're taking mountains, which is the by opposite the get, direction to sea level. By the time level. you get to the city, it will be the mountain. Ah. Uh, you're, not, you're not touching mountains just yet. That's as soon as you get to the three locations. Well, either either way, uh, Wake's vote would still be on the ship graveyard, if only because of its expedience. And he has, like, he honestly has yet to run into a fey creature that has meant him actual harm. So he does not believe the issue there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if if he was told that it would be faster to go the the ship graveyard, Chromagill would I would I think he he would eventually relent and be like. Well, speed is more important. He understands that time is the factor that a lot of the people Meech. are... Let me roll for Micha and... Uh... Yeah. Plus, you get to experience more things you've never seen. That's true. Okay. Valtara wants to explore the Underdark. Okay. Micha wants to take the land route. So it's a tie between land and underdark. Do player character votes count <laughs> as more? <laughs> They're a party, Wake. We have to listen to all of them. It's but a, it's a democratic but, process. But <laughs> uh, Micha will not uh, fight over the idea of you guys wanting to take an ocean route because the Yith will give them guidance. Yeah, there we go. See, oh. she's been talking to this Yith guy this entire time. So at that point, she'd be like, okay, if I had to choose based on that, it'd be the Underdark route. Don't betray me. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Wake's just walking around. like, oh, come on. What's wrong with the Fae? I've, every single one of them I've met has either gotten me incredibly drunk or has just been cool. I don't necessarily have a problem with the concept of the Fae... You know, as a whole, it's just more infamous phase with stories of sinking ships or putting them in bottles. Sound, so, sounds some, scary. Something tells me that at least with this current ongoings of the world, they probably don't want the world to end and destroy their hobby. This, this is true. I suppose that would be a, a, a point to, a, with which we could argue. Okay, oh, oh. here's here's what I'm thinking. We could do this if this is going to if this is really going to eat at us right now. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say like I at least need an answer before next game. I'm I'm I'm, I'm pretty set on which way I think yeah. we should go. Okay. Right. Um, Faye, bird is Faye. <laughs> it's short as uh, funglets. <laughs> okay. I'll roll you for it. How about that? Okay. Yeah. You. Since Chromagill could be swayed either way, I'm I'm going to I'm going to stay out. You two roll, and I'm. I'm Meech, Meech doesn't care because she's getting she's she's just here for the ride at this point. 
The moment, the moment you guys fucking like don't need to use the yith anymore, she's out. I'll push it that way so I don't have to read it. That is a fifteen to my twelve. Ha ha! Then the sea route takes it. Or the, the broken dice wins again. Damn you! All right, so I will start writing for those paths if need be. I just need to make sure if you guys wanted to decide if you want to take the land route or the sea route, I can yeah. work with this. Yeah, the. So I, I'd go. The, I'd go the sea route, but we would like to take a day in town to resupply and stock up. That would and, be South Zealous then. Well, w whatever town we were going to stop at first, the dwarf town. That's a. That's all the way to the yeah, north. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That, that was if we were heading towards the underdark. Ah, it's, okay. It's, so think of it this a, way. It was a stop. No, so on think the way. of it this: town, underdark, sea hag. All right, Sea like, Hag it is. Yeah. Or tr True Fay, I'm sorry. Yeah. True Fay, Sea Hag, same same difference to Wake. Pretty much. Ship all Graveyard. Die. All right, no, so you're taking the ocean route. I can work mm -hmm. with yeah. this. All right, cool. All right, fair enough. All right. We can stop here. So we have decided where we're going, but before we leave this session entirely, we have an extra long fan art. It's time for some fan art. We do. We've had to miss it the last few weeks for various circumstances, but alas, no more! We got 19, I think you said, this week to look through? Yep. I'm excited to see what we got going on here. Let me open up TFS at the table, um, or TFS, TFS fan, fan art. art. Twitter.com slash TFS fan art. All right, uh, if you want to start at 19 and work your way down... Oh. Oh. Well, I'll go up to 19, then. It's adorable, yeah. too. We'll get back to it, though. You'll see that soon enough. Alrighty, from uh, Red Je uh, Red Jemmy, some uh, Ziaka and Valtara sketch work. Wait, what? Oh, oh, that's... oh okay. Well, there's Valtara. Oh, gotcha. uh, that, that was on the... Uh... It's on the next one. Oh. Wait, what? It's 18. Oh, oh 18. Also 19 okay. and 18. Oh, 19 both. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it's a two-page spread. Gotcha. It's a two-page spread. Okay. I see. Sense, it is a making. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Look at there you go. Good stuff. And who's this by? Uh, this is uh, Red Jemmy. Good job, Thank Red you, Jemmy. Red oh, Jemmy. yeah. Uh, the, the, the Their commissions heads. are open. It's time for our reptile moms. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Scale are... mamas. What we got? Wait, no, 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 no. Hold up, hold up. One okay. quick second. Dinosaurs aren't reptiles. What? They're are they not? Birds. birds. Avian. They're avian. I know, I know, I know. Uh... It's the one decent thing from Jurassic Park. <laughs> What? Where are all the feathers? No, one I love that movie. <laughs> they exist, it's just that there are some people who don't like that idea. <laughs> I think it's great. I love feathered dinosaurs. True. Oh, Tyler. They'd stay warmer that way. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much, Red Jebby. Thanks, Kindly. Uh, next up. Hey. Ooh, the crew. Look at that. I believe that's also Red Jemmy as well. I think I actually fucked up and didn't actually repost that because... Twitter. It's what our, is? It's our album cover. Yeah, Wake's got some scoliosis. He's just he's showing off his uh his abs and just giving you a nice. No, it is. I am one hundred percent right. It is uh Red Jemmy once again. Our heroes, Morgan Strong, aka Red Jacket, Chromagill flank the, uh, at Chromagill flank the returning Wake Scalebound, aka Blue Skin. Yo, that's right. I describe them by what they look like. <laughs> it's my thing. Chromagill and chums. Alrighty, thank you so much. Next up, good stuff, Red Jemmy. There Whoa. we go. Oh, oh yeah. my God! From Jesper PRL. That is a haunted man. That is a haunted man. What happened to his chin? <laughs> I can tell you, but then you'd be haunted. Oh yeah. no! Just, I just, I never want to have a look in my eye Quite that like this that. man has right now. <laughs> Tertiary. Tertiary. <laughs> it's the card gauge curse. Oh, the, God. <laughs> the shadow on his eyes. Oh, yeah. Scary. Like, sunken in. Yeah, just adds a lot of, like, ugh to this. But it looks really good. You said this was Jesper? Yep. Nicely done. Oh, yeah. Next up. Oh, I see they signed it there at the bottom. Another two. The next two pieces are also Jesper. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oldie but a goodie. Uh, it's a throwback. I love it. Yep. Classic Deerman Onslow. And you said, oh, and you said that it's a two, another two-page yep. spread. So next page, uh, next picture is also that. Oh Ooh. yeah, look at that. Ooh. Sure oh yeah. Out of the water. Uh, th this is another one. I think I think this is one from like a while back. Yeah, these are colored versions. Ah, ah gotcha. gotcha. Got they, they got went look, look at them pecs. Uh, yeah. God damn. They went back to their old black and whites and made them colorful. Goals, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
God, that's, that'd be a hell of a tattoo if you had the tail in there. Like, God, now I just fucking see that Onslow picture, and I'm just like, they never return back as boys. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good, good shit. Thank you kindly, Jasper. All right, next up. From XZ Element. Ooh. Whoa. Pro McGill JoJo style. Oh, my Podemos gosh. Stando. That is an uncomfortable stand. Uh, bows and roses. Ooh, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh, man, and now that I got the crossbow, it works even better. Yeah. There you go. It all, it all adds up. <laughs> this creepy wooden face. Count his rings. That's how old my stand is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Next up. Ah, I got oh, yeah. to go all the way down a little bit. I'm sorry. I, I love think. the I, I love the uh, very like minimal line art yeah. style, like that Samurai Jack style. From a uh, Clayton nine eight seven three Lieutenant Gore uh, cosplaying uh, Johnny Bravo cosplaying as Lieutenant Gore. All right. Yeah. No, I could. I can oh, see yeah. him being a fan of gore. Oh, definitely. He's a big guy. Chicks love him. That kind of He's stuff. the size of an island. So now I just fucking see uh, Jeff Bennett voicing uh, gore. Lieutenant Gore. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, thank you. Next up. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Lady D Draws. Been super busy with my own D&D game and my jewelry making, so I haven't had time to work in the fan art, so here we have a very drunk scary axe. <laughs> and a small poofy anger, Micha. It's Cleva she is, holding her up. Just... She is fucking like 700% done with everything right now. <laughs> the angry cat face is great. Oh, the upside down U is phenomenal. <laughs> and I love mm. how, how psyched Cleva is. It's just a fun cat. Look, I get older. I hate this. <laughs> I fucking hate this. I, Gr I'm not... Grumpy Micha. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Good stuff. Pull me down. I won't be here. I want wet food. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give me dry biscuits? No. Uh. I want to go to the vet. Mm. Oh, God. God, I, I just, am the I just vet. I can imagine. Do tabaxi's uh, inhale like catnip as like a as like a drug just to chill? Like, do you think? Do you think that's their pipe weed? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, some or just have like a bag of just. Yeah. This is my relaxing time. Oh! It's almost oh, like this is Micha time. <laughs> it's almost like smelling salts. She probably yeah. is she, yeah. like, you could you could totally have it in your canon that that is what's in her plague doctor mask. Just, just catnip just, at the very end of it. Fuck, you know what? That makes 100% <laughs> sense. Hell yeah. I'm into that. It's it, getting it, a little nippy focus. out here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just I need to calm down. All right, ready to operate. Shit, I need, <laughs> shit, I need to be a surgeon. I need to be a surgeon today. Okay, let's go. Let's do this. It's like, like, the, like the dentist from Little Shop. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Lady D. Next up. Ooh. Oh, oh. yeah. I love this one. Uh, let me go ahead. From Oh No, It's Slime. Commissions are open. It's a very, like, lank, like kind of a lankier la uh, wake, but I like it. I, I mean, always imagine him as fairly lean. Yeah. Like, and, and, that, that, I, and I love the, uh, the tattoo sleeve of Sakura Petals. This yep. is fucking very, very Buddhist monk. This is MMO. Fucking. This is MMO concept wake. Ah. I I it's not what it says, but right. I believe yeah. so. The, the art of Los Serranos. Yeah, 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 yeah. When we were originally coming up with the concept for Wake Scalebound, <laughs> he was <laughs> <laughs> looked a little something like this. Love it. Good stuff. Thank you so much. Next up. Hey. Uh, we got this hanging up from yeah, Links of it's Time. It's hanging right over there by Tyler right now. We could have the physical thing. Tyler, could you fetch me the thing that's right, to, just to your right? So that it may appear. Behold Magically. Picture, behold picture and picture. And witness. Magic. Just gotta raise it up. Ooh. Oh, no. Whoa. It's on the, that's right, it's on chain mail, so it has to. Yeah. There we go. Look Ooh. at it. From uh, Links of Time. Finally, I'm getting around to tweeting my secret TFS uh, at the table project. A huge thanks to Marvel Poison for making the original design. Absolutely. A Looks wonderful great. design. Thank you so much. We got that hanging up right now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Look at the rip of it. It's chain like the water. It will defend you. Next up. Yep, next. 
Oh, God. <laughs> yes. I know who this is. That's Bangarang. Bangarang Aliko. <laughs> Wake nostalgic for Grabby's cooking while Chromagill spots an old new friend. I, re- I reposted this on my uh, Instagram with, I got this feeling like somebody's watching me. <laughs> Just like playing in the background. <laughs> Just like Chromagill looking like he considers Grammy. <laughs> like hmm. he just the you thinker. just exist. It's so like you're a thing. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you're in an art museum. It's like an interesting installation. <laughs> Quite a piece. What it's were they trying to say with it? Really brings this and wall br- yeah. together. Yeah. What are they trying to say with it? That blood! It's wet out here, and my hand is metal! Such an enthralling piece. It comes to life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Wake looks up. like a citizen in Bloodborne. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That dude you hear calling. Foul number. beast! Ooh, uh, away! Away! away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. Thank you, Bangarang. This Ooh. is from uh, Art No Kujin. Ooh. Uh, this is Surf and Turf Weapons. I love it. I miss Surf and Turf. Nedra has to keep her up her training, though. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll get back, and your turf will be so much stronger. Oh, and your yeah. surf will have learned so many new things on the way. It's a constant process. It's it really is. good. I'm, I'm super into this traditional art stuff. Thank yeah. you. And, oh, I, yeah. and I love that. Uh, I love the look of the trident there, too. Like, just very non-traditional sort of, like, shaping on it. Mm-hmm. Yo, I will say this. Uh, good job on getting the shadows to look right on the Tatsubo from going to light to dark. Mm. Yeah. Because with an object shaped like that, it's very easy to flub it and not get it right. That looks fucking great. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's really good. Good awesome job. Awesome stuff. Next up. Uh, from the AOG99. The AOG99. Stop right there, criminal scum. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the kind words. Dead or hungry, you're coming with me. <laughs> uh, thank you for the kind words about my Nedra drawing. I'm really glad you guys enjoyed it. Here's some Chromagill. Cleva, Cleva, you've been drinking. How many f- tendrils am I holding up? <laughs> Six. God, the cross hatching on that. Maybe. <laughs> what are numbers? I, yeah, I haven't learned your number system yet, but that sounds close enough. Let's go. This looks like really good comic book art. I love it. Hell yeah. The cr- if I didn't know the context, I'd be like, and a horrible creature walks from the forest would, would be the descriptor here. <laughs> Hi, welcome to King's Way, and this is one of the monsters that you have to face. Oh, God. Halt! <laughs> this thing comes up to you and sneezes on your girl. What do you do? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, sh- I immediately show him my ship in a bottle. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> BRB, his- I'm just going to take this. <laughs> he puts his hands on where his chin would be and looks excited. <laughs> Thank you so much. You've assuaged the beast. Next up, from Julie Fish. Aww. Just another day, another doodle. Pensive Nedra, I love it. In a meditation pool. Like she has her little uh, sake, or uh, I guess that's a tea uh, teacup. Tea yeah. Yep. <laughs> nah, she's getting crunk over there. <laughs> It's oh. been a day. Oh, God. Yeah, now I miss my like med- Now that wake's gone. up after they're, a they're day Sheldon. of trading. There's Sheldon. Now that wake's gone, let's party. <laughs> I don't want a party anymore. We keep, we keep this stuff away when Wake's around. God, yes, you do. You do because it's normal. <laughs> I miss my master. Thank you so much. This is really nice. Next up, you can do the next one. Oh, another one wow. from Julie Fish, the she, blind artist. She's the one that like she's she disappeared. We don't know what dimension she was in when uh yeah. when all of that went down. Yeah, nobody as far as I can tell knows what's happened to her cuz she wasn't around in the last moments we got to witness for the other crew. So now that's a ta- yeah. that is a tattoo. Yeah, that's great. That, that is, is a, ta- a tattoo. that is a tattoo. That's a shoulder tattoo. Yeah, it is. A character select profile. Yeah, that one with weight coming out of the water is more of like a sleeve thing. This one's a shoulder tattoo. Oh, that's like the fucking persona profile shots in there. Yeah. UI. yeah. yeah. Awesome either stuff. Or, with the, with the either, fucking either HP or, and MP bar around their heads. Yeah, either that or gorillas from the Demon Days cover. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I, th- yeah, I think we already had a uh, art piece like yeah. that too. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Next up, Marvel Aww. Poison. Dino Mom. Dino Mom is here. She's basically the equivalent of like Nanny from Muppet Babies. Don't forget to study. That's kind of how I see it. You know what? Yeah, that's what fair. are you kids doing in here? Nothing. <laughs> Okay. Okay. You little shit. <laughs> Gonzo, stop opening that goddamn closet. There's always something bad in there. 
Oh, man. Thank you so much. Next up. Oh, yes. <laughs> Another one from Bang Rangaliko. This is uh, us playing Jenga meets uh, unspeakable, unspeakable Words. words. Brother, oh, yeah. Brother Abraham. Our, Brother our creepy Abraham. cult uh, yep. summoning Cthulhu while also pulling small wooden blocks. <laughs> That man, was a fun twist we did for that. Man, I love this. Just like one of them is also looking at the rules, like <laughs> speaking to the orb. <laughs> Hold on. The divine text says, the ancient accords speak you can't pull from the top three rows. <laughs> Sven, Sven, for Fink, Snake, for A billion Brother terrible Abraham. dreams. Brother Abraham, you have rolled a one. Don't be a bitch. Pull the lever. <laughs> you know it's your turn to be sacrificed. <laughs> We Great. all knew. Good stuff. Thank you, Bangarang. Thank you. Next up. Aww. And here we are. Uh, from Also from Oh No, It's Slime. A, a commission I did for Zane Manuel of Red and Ziaka from TFS at the Table. Aw. Uh, oh, sweet. So they actually like were so concerned were... and called me up and just went, yo, is this cool? And I'm like, you know what? Based on these two characters' interactions, I can 100% be see this being canon. <laughs> like, this, this is totally fine. This is totally 100% <laughs> legit. So I was like, go ahead. I mean, that and they asked. Yeah, that and also, big ups, they asked. <laughs> Very cute. Right. Well, good stuff. Is that the last one? I believe it be. Well, yeah, yeah. thank you so much for all the awesome art. Thank you kindly for joining us here and for making all of this possible. And we'll see you guys next time at the table. Later, Wonders. Bye.